Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing! Hey, happy Saturday. How's it going? Nice to see you guys and gals. <laughs> you were going to be in this for the last two hours. Wow, nice. That's awesome. I feel like I didn't work on my face cam and it, it's such a weird proportion. Like I feel like I got to tuck my shirt in or something. <laughs> I'm really loving wearing my Ames jeans, and I, but I think I'm going to take the waistband off and um, I'm going to cut it on the straight grain. It feels like it's been cut. It was cut on the bias. I can't remember if that was the case. And then um, I'm going to make it wider since I can't raise the waist line and it's just a little too low and I'm going to add belt loops and <sighs> I'm going to take the zipper out and put it back in again because for some reason I grabbed a zipper that isn't a jean zipper so it slowly comes undone. It was a short uh, zipper. I'll bet the fabric store I bought it from was did, just doesn't know that you need specific style zippers for jeans so they just put them near them and it's for bag making instead. So <laughs> nice Hannah, I'm glad. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Barbara. I know that one. Does it do like that brown stuff? Yeah. Hi, Emily. Hi, Delwyn. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is obviously not my bag, but I just wanted to share it with you because you guys have heard me say that I want to make the beeswax wraps, and I've been trying to do this for like years, like years, you guys. And I finally just bought some, and then I even I bought some, and I bought like a larger package of them and then I hacked them with zippers like made them zip shut and stuff because you know like a ziploc bag and it's they're just awesome I love using those <clears throat> um, but they're getting like worn out and they don't stick anymore and they're just so handy I just love using those things so I, it, I you know like I say I have the Minerva ambassadorship and they have so many fabrics that are I are really cute but they're just not really great for a lot of the projects we sew and I want an excuse to use them and so they they are like yeah you can totally we don't care what you make with it as long as you make something with it and you post about it so I got my fabrics a little while ago and they're really cute but I just got the so I did the research on the beeswax stuff so and I was and what gave me the final kick in the pants to do this is that frugalissima posted a video on it and I was like I just need to do this I just waxed the whole raincoat this is not going to be as bad you know um, and, and, and waxing raincoat is really easy. It just takes a little bit of time, right? And a little bit of setup. So just like everything. And I think there's more nerves involved because you're like, okay, well, this is it. There's no going back from this. I can't wash the wax out. Right. 
but this is pretty straightforward. Um, and she, Frugalissima Sam, didn't do, didn't use the stuff like with pine resin and jojoba oil in them to make them get that flexible stuff. And I kind of wanted to do that, but I was kind of dreading buying those things because you have to buy so much. And then there's this whole thing surrounding pine resin about it being responsibly um, uh, like gathered. And so I was like, oh gosh, now I feel scared to buy it. And I was just like getting overwhelmed because I don't know the whole world of these products and stuff. Well, I stumbled upon this Etsy site and they make little individual meltable things. They're very, very affordable too. Um, and everything's in it. So everything is in this, the beeswax, the jojoba oil, the pine resin, and it was all sustainably gathered or whatever. I'm not sure. It's kind of out of my depth. Um, and um, one of these will do a wrap that is pretty big, like, like this wide by this tall. So a really big wrap. So I'm in our house, um, I like something about half that size. So I, this is my Christmas gift to family members this year. So I ended up getting them and I got, of course, some of the cute ones, like there's these little flowers and then these little guys and then um, squares. So I got a lot of them. I think for all of this, I'm gonna get way too many wraps. Um, Let's see. Yeah, so it says a waxing bar covers one large beeswax wrap, approximately 13 by 14 inches. Um, and you can buy like tons of this. Like if you want to do this as a big project with a lot of people, she has like this whole discount thing where you can get this big thing. Anyway, oh, and the place I got them, just in case you're interested, what's her name? Jenny Joy's Soap Premixed Beeswax Wrap Formula. So, um, and then she was on Etsy. Jenny Joy's soap. Do I have like a picture of her? I don't think I do. Of her little thing. Jenny Joy. Just in case you guys are interested. <laughs> I'm gonna do this and it's, I can't really do it on camera. I, I'll try and see if I'm gonna film it because I have to do it at home. Um, but yeah, you just, I'm just gonna melt these, brush it on the fabric and that's it, right? So, and so let me show you my fabrics cause I got some really cute ones. And otherwise you're not gonna get to see this little project and I'm kind of into it. So I got this, this one right here is called, well, I don't know what it's called actually. <laughs> I called it dog forest, but it, little dogs in the forest. And then I got these uh, beakers. Can you see that they're beakers? My nephew is super sciencey. So is my niece actually. Um, she's more into art. And then I got this. I felt this is like the absolute quintessential beeswax wrap fabric print. Look at that. Little foods and critters and things. Um, oh, and one of the other things I wanted to show you guys. Look at how wide this fabric is. All right. So has anyone heard of Rico fabrics before? Are they washable? Yes. You, I don't, you can't put them in the dishwasher, but yes. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Libby, Sydney, Walter, <laughs> Malin. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Sarah. Yeah, so I already said hi, Sarah, sorry. Yeah, you can wash them. Um, I have like a little like wooden stand next to my dish rack that I put like bags on and things like that. Um, I would say these are easier to wash because they're flat. There's no corners of a bag, except for the ones where I put a zipper in them. And then those, you know, there are corners, but I save those for things like cookies, muffins, things like that, you know? Um, and then my favorite one is like almost like this big and it has a button and a string on it. And so you put your, it's not this big, it's, it's actually much smaller. You put your sandwich in it and you just do this. And then there's a button here and then a string and you wrap it around and wrap it around the button. And that's actually one of my absolute favorite ones. Um, and then, you know, like if you want to put it like over a, a bowl, like say you're letting dough rise or um, something that you don't have a lid for, they're really great. And they're far more often to stick to whatever you're putting them to than stupid saran wrap. So, hi Cheyenne, how's it going? <laughs> hey Terry, welcome. So anyway, I just thought I'd share, oh, this is upside down. Okay, has anyone heard of Rico Fabrics? I had never heard of them and they're all over the Minerva site. Um, 
And I didn't know if, honestly, I didn't know, like, is it, like, is it, because, you know, there's different names for fabrics nowadays. Like, when I went to school, we called, you know, one fabric something, and now you guys call it, not you guys, but I feel like the home sewing world calls it something a little different. It's like terms change. And so I thought, what if Rico fabric is some style of fabric, but it's a brand. But look at how much wider it is. It's like, it's a cotton fabric that is 48 inches wide after being washed. Like, how nice is that? And the quality feels really great. You know, I'd say it's a little lighter weight. This is right here, Robert Kaufman. Um, this is Robert Kaufman. The other one is the uh, organic from Art Gallery. <laughs> Look at how much wider that is. This is on the fold, by the way. That's, it looks like that much wider in fabric. So anyway, I've never heard of them. I don't know if maybe this is a fabric based in the UK. So I've been kind of curious about it and I thought, oh, this is the perfect thing. I can just order it. It says it's 100% cotton. So hopefully it's gonna work for my wraps plan. So anyway, yeah, these are all quilting cottons. I think this one's the lightest of them all. This is very similar to like my Paddington top or um, the Mercer or um, the March top that I just made. It's a little closer to an apparel weight. Thinner is better for these probably. You don't want something too chunky, you know? All right, let me, that's my little, I'm kind of looking forward to that little project. All right, so, but today we are doing the ideal bag. And this is a free pattern. I know a ton of people are downloading it right now. That's awesome. It's free on my website. It does not have written instructions. It is a very big pattern, but it is free. And there is a great video that goes along with it to sew it. Um, and I'm gonna sew one next week. And I'm hoping out of this that maybe I will start just writing some, at least some basic sewing instructions. Maybe it won't be the full edited um, package I usually provide. I'll just chip away at it. I'm kind of sad that I don't have uh, timestamps in the original ideal bag video, which kind of surprised me, but I think at the time I didn't know how to do it and they hadn't launched the chapters feature. So, so that's kind of, I'll, I'll go back and do that unless someone wants to do it. But so anyway, this bag was designed by all of you guys. At the beginning of the Panini, we really, I really wanted like a big immersive project, something a little out of the norm, something we could all kind of distract ourselves with and kind of involve ourselves in. Um, so we spent a lot of time designing it and I just took your guys' requests and there were requests along the lines of full, to fit a full size laptop, like a separate sleeve that's um, cushioned with a, for a full size laptop uh, a place for an insulin uh, pin or anything really precious that you want to keep and maybe um, have it very secure inside the bag. Phone, glasses, uh, wallet, keys, uh, papers, uh, water bottle. And so these are all the things that this bag can hold. It's quite gigantic. I don't actually have one here because I sold them both. And um, that feels like a long time ago. Oh, really, Barbara? Oh, okay. So it isn't an American company. Okay. Yeah, right, Elizabeth? It was really fun. Request that it turned into a sleeping bag. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was quite ambitious, if I do say so myself. My aim was to make a pattern that anybody could sew even though it has all these bells and whistles in it. And the other thing I kind of, I kind of gently, you know, suggested a few things and kind of, you know, directed things that way. Um, there are two flap options. So one flap is just a full on flap and it has like gathered size. So if you're, sides, so if you're kind of concerned, things can fall out of a messenger style bag. This is gonna hug the top right here. It's pretty uh, low profile. You don't really notice it. Um, it. You know, like when you're just, you know, you see the bag in action. This is the full size one. It's pretty big. There's pictures on yesterday's Instagram post of me wearing both. And then you can print this at 85% size, which a lot of people do. 
and make a smaller version and that's what I'm gonna do. It's the exact same sewing, um, but it's a little smaller. And then there's a picture of me wearing a white one. My, I call it my glass one because I got this wax cotton canvas in a muslin. It, like they wax, they waxed a muslin canvas, so that's what it looks like. But when they waxed it, it made it see through. So I ended up using this bird print so you could see the birds through the bag. So that was just kind of like, I just kind of went with it, you know? And I think that's the one being sewn in the video, I want to say. Is that the one being sewn in the video? Sheesh, you know, I'm realizing I had one of these all cut out at one point. I never sewed it, so. <laughs> you can have a lot of questions, Sarah. So, um... <laughs> don't I'm not gonna forgive you at all so this is a standard pattern card you're gonna open this up and go holy smokes and yeah there's a lot of pieces they're all labeled um, some of them are the same piece so this is all your outer fabric pieces this is your lining fabric this is optional padding interfacing in red down here and the, you, you know you're using the same pieces throughout so it's not like you have this many pieces but there's a lot of pieces um, the full size bag measures 16 and a half inches wide, 11 inches tall, and four inches deep. And then I called the 85% size one, which you actually have to punch it into your printer to print it at 85%, is 14 inches wide, uh, nine and a quarter inches tall, and three and three quarters inches deep. So you only le lose a quarter of an inch in the depth front to back by doing that. So, but if you go much less than 85%, it gets pretty small quick. So just think about that. If you wanna make this, make this like use the bare bones of this and make it for a smaller person or child, you could uh, just be wary that some of your pockets might get a little too small. The water bottle sleeve might not fit a water bottle. And I think of all the pattern pieces, the water bottle is really the only one that you, you need to kind of go, oh, Maybe I should make sure that this fits around my water bottle because everybody uses a different kind. So, and then the water bottle sleeve style, let's see, there are pictures of the inside. There is kind of on this one right here. You can see maybe right there. The sleeve is just a piece of fabric that comes out of the side seam. And so when it's not in use, it just presses up against the side of the bag. I don't really like it when they're a permanent function. You can't use it for anything but that. You can get the pattern on my website, Crockett. I should probably, I'll can put a link in the chat. It is free and let me, let me find it here. Um, I'm obviously not that prepared, all right. Or am I? I was printing orders when I started. Where's my, yeah, here we go. I'll put it in the chat and I know chat doesn't load for like 24 hours after the live stream. So I'll also put it in the description of you. Here we go. Where's the chat? <laughs> there we go. All right, so this is a link to the bag pattern. Yeah, there's a, it's a, it's a big pattern. There's not very many to tape together, but we're gonna, I'm gonna tell you, in my opinion, um, I wanna put, add this to the bottom of the, in the description right now before I forget, so I'm gonna do that right now. I think I can edit this. Okay. In the, it should be in the description. If, if, if it's not now, it will be after the stream. Um, in my opinion, if you are ahead of me and you've already cut this out, the thing to do is to at least pay attention at the beginning of the video on how I stack it. Because with bags that are kind of ambitious with a lot of pattern pieces and you're just like, oh my God, these are all of some version of a rectangle or a square. <laughs> and then some are in outer fabric and some are in lining. The best thing to do is to group things together the way they go. And if you haven't made this bag before, how are you gonna know that? So um, what I say is 
take my tip and stack it in your bin or whatever you use to hold all your pieces in the order, in the reverse order of how you're gonna sew it. And that's how I do that. And I put the notions with it and everything. Make separate bins if you have to. And the way I would group it is, I would group it as your front of your bag, because all your pockets are gonna attach to the front of the bag. And then you have your front and you can assemble it to the bag. Same with the back and then same with the inside. And then I have my lining pieces and that's kind of how I do it. So we're gonna do that at the end when I cut mine out. So you print your needle head toed at 75%. Oh, could you just leave out the inner pocket or had you already sewn it? Can it hold lip gloss or something like that? <laughs> so yeah, and you guys will have plenty of time to catch up. I'm not starting sewing until next Wednesday, which is, um, I have no clue what day that is. Let's see, that is November 3rd. Holy smokes, that's next month. All right, so uh, this is it. This is all you get in the pattern as far as instructions. You get the cover page, you don't have to print that out. You get this little layout and this is like what you cut of each pattern piece. This is your notions, your yardage, uh, a few pictures and then the seam allowance. Um, this is a very traditional pattern card from the garment industry and these are the finished measurements so this is like your this is all the sewing floor gets by the way this is it <laughs> um, and then there's usually it's usually on a big project like this they get more it might have stuff on the back that's kind of a no-no sometimes in some factories uh, below what I started doing was I started putting my finished measurements on the back um, and then all of my um, instructions would have to fit below this picture. And the notions usually were right, right down here. So this is a pretty big pattern for this pattern card. So, all right, uh, these are the pattern pieces I'm not using because I'm not putting a flap on mine, but I will say I am kind of thinking about it. So let me show you my sketch. Oh, the other thing I'm thinking about doing is making a wallet. And this is another free pattern on my site is the wallet. This is free, right? I know it's free, but is it free to everybody or do you have to be a patron? Let me check before I say that. Sorry. You might have to be a Patreon patron to, ha to get that one. Um, let me check for you. It just occurred to me because I was like, oh, everyone's going to see my dingy little wallet and maybe it's time for me to make another one. Every time I pull it out at the store now, I'm kind of like, maybe I should wash this. Oh, it's for Patreon patrons. Sorry unless you want to be a Patreon patron, but there's a lot of you. I'm going to make me a wallet. You don't have to. All right. So this is what I want in my bag. My ideal bag is going to have my wallet, my phone, my car keys. And this is why I'm changing over to using the ideal bag rather than a pocket bucket. The pocket bucket is usually my go-to uh, is because my iPad's kind of gigantic and it has this uh, built-in keyboard which I love because it also holds up my iPad and my pencil. And I'm so tired of worrying about losing my Apple pencil. Um, in fact, that's why I have a skin on it. Uh, that looks like gingham fabric, by the way, um, because I was scared to lose it. And I, I just thought, oh, for $12, I will get a skin so that I can not worry about it. Um, a water bottle, this is my water bottle placeholder. <laughs> and then, um, uh, I want uh, this little miniature binder that I have, which I don't have here, but I think I have one that's kind of like it. Uh, but I use a miniature binder and a, a schedule thing. Those are the bare minimum of things that I want. And a mask. I want a separate mask pocket, which I think this bag already has. Because I am tired of shoving this in and then I'll put my keys on top of it. And the keys are just gross. Uh, if you want to see the wallet, this is what it looks like. So there's no technical closures. It's just a piece of elastic, which you could just open the stitches there and replace over time if you want. This has been in circulation for two years, right? I feel like I released that two years ago. This was a pattern I sewed in at Chicken Boots for a limited edition thing. It has a clear pocket on the front that zips for coins. This is a very simple pocket uh, wallet, but it works for what I need. It has a billfold right here. It has a clear license pocket right here. 
And then um, these are all my card pockets right here, which are kind of messy right now because I never get to use my wallet. The back is just solid. Uh, so when my wallet's open, this is what it looks like. And the coin thing is upside down, right? But it's zippered, so it's not a big deal. I usually, I'm so used, to, I'm so good at holding my wallet that it's not a big deal. Uh, I did this little stitching just with my home sewing machine. I just took a piece of scrap denim and stitched little houses on it. It was really fun. <laughs> but look at how gross the binding is. <laughs> so this is what I want. My wallet's kind of big too, as far as like, um, like for the pocket too. Yeah, oh yeah, the vinyl. I use really good vinyl. Yeah, there's no problems with the vinyl at all. It, it, the vinyl and all of our stuff at Chicken Boots, you could put scissors in the pocket. No problem. Yeah, see, I don't own, I, I own a couple purses, but I'm not a purse carrier. Uh, this is starting, this is getting me into that category of purse, right? But the two I have, I just, don't like the way my iPad would be in there. That wouldn't. They, they would just be kind of kicking around in there. So, all right. So we're just gonna set these things aside. <laughs> so um, let's get to it. So oh yeah, let me show you what I drew. So this is what I want to do differently from the ideal bag. In the um, the way you guys designed it. So I would like. Let me um, tone down that brightness. There you go. So I would like to remove the front flap. And I, I'm thinking about doing shoulder straps so I can carry it over my shoulder rather than like a messenger bag because I'm not a messenger bag type of gal. I, I don't know what you guys, what do you guys think? I don't, I'm not sure I like the look of it. And I want a zippered closure. So there's going to be a zippered closure right there. Right there across the top just like the laundry bag has. Um, you know, I can still use these for my eyeglasses and, um, uh, well, not my wallet. Hmm. So I'm thinking, what if I moved this pocket to the side here since I don't have the, the shoulder strap? What if I cleaned up this front? Oh, and I'm doing it in the green waxed canvas that I've been kind of holding on to. I'm going to do it with all these little scraps of small colorful florals in my stash. <laughs> it's going to be kind of busy inside, but I mean, look at these florals. They're just all so good. Like I don't have enough for this and I think it would be fantastic inside. But I also have a little bit of this Liberty I got on a swap. I got this um, fake Liberty. I have this one with the little cats in it. And then this one with the cats in it. <laughs> and then this is gonna be my outer bag is this uh, really stiff waxed cotton, which uh, I have only sewn once with, and that was earlier this month with for the cocoon. So it's not gonna be all nice and flat by the time, or uh, crisp when I'm done, till I'm done. So when I'm done, I do too. This is by, um, Al Francis textiles on Etsy. Noodlehead buys from them a lot. Um, but you can see it is some stiff stuff. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a mason jar for my. No, I'm too accident prone to use a mason jar. I used to use a mason jar when I worked, when I lived somewhere where they, before the, a time where there were water bottles, you know, for sale. But yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Hi, Ray. Ray, uh, okay, I have, I'm glad you're here because I have to thank you for something because I think that I have you to thank for this. So I got a, a donation recently from someone um, and uh, I, I get a lot of donations from you guys and it's really awesome, but someone gave me something a little bit more to do something and they were like, what about that, that Elgato stream deck or something that you want? Um, and I had to talk, talk with her because there were some complications because it was international. So that's why 
Um, I launched an Amazon wish list because of what some of the things Ray had said, and I haven't mentioned it. It's just like in one of my support pages somewhere. <laughs> um, and, uh, and they discovered it and they were like, I'd like to buy you this thing, but I can't because of where I live. So uh, her name is Kate and I really am thankful. And she just said, just use it however you want to improve your stream. And I've been thinking a lot about like changing the, the way the cameras are or making a better arm or changing my backdrop for some classes that I want to record or making space for this Elgato Stream Deck. So thank you, Ray, for maybe inspiring the Amazon wish list that they discovered. Um, I really appreciate it. So thank you. <laughs> You want to put all the pockets on an interior divider piece so they are hidden, but I live in a city to take. Yeah, so Elizabeth, on the inside, there is a sleeve to hold your laptop, and a lot of pockets are on that sleeve. Let's see if I can show you a picture of that. I have it actually on my iPad right now. There we go. Um, here we go. So on the inside, this isn't actually exactly how it's constructed. This is a sleeve right here to put your laptop behind. And then here, there are some pockets. It looks different than that though. We kind of evolved it from that. Oh, oh, oh I do have a photo. Let's see if I can pull it up of the, um, uh, of the inside. I took a picture of the bag inside out for that reason. And I didn't post that yesterday because it's a little confusing to look at when you notice that it's inside out. Oh, well, here, here's a picture of the... So here's the water bottle sleeve. And then can you see that there is the divider? So right here, Oops, this right here is the divider. And then here is a pocket right here. Oh my gosh. Um, and then, so this is divided into two pockets with, and it's divided, but there's only one zipper to make it easier to sew. See the zipper in there by, by any chance? So you could instead put those three pockets on the inside on that divider, or you could, you could even um, make your divider deeper so that the whole thing is divided in half and put some pockets on the back side too. Did you, Sydney? Oh, cool. <laughs> I'm glad it's discoverable. <laughs> so, I knew you'd like that, Ray. You like how I'm customizing my own pattern? I'm customizing your pattern. I remember Walter was there. He was, he was given some, some suggestions. All right, so what do I need to do differently? And I'm gonna use one of my bindings that I, we just had. Oh, I just got. So let's see, let's look at my pattern pieces. So I went through, I went through, I printed out all the pattern pieces and um, what I like to do as well is I like to underline in black when it's in outer fabric, in blue when it's in lining fabric, and if there's any interfacing, underlining it in red. That way it corresponds to this list here. And if you want to do something like in a contrast fabric, maybe you want the front one fabric, the back another fabric, I would make your contrast green and make that consistent. So yeah, you can totally do that, Elizabeth. You could just flip the front. Maybe that's what I'll do. I still want space on the inside to hold my lunch. So this is my thinking. At first I was like, I want to be able to hold everything. <laughs> like every time I get fabric and I'm, cause I carry fabric back and forth every freaking day or a garment or something. And then I, I want to shove it in there. You know what? No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to either make myself a matching lunch bag or um, I will have everything in that bag. It'll be secure on my shoulder. And then I have hands to carry my fabric. So. You have it yet to make it, Walter? <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, I know. Every I, This is the funny thing. I'm going to challenge all of you. This is my challenge. I want you to post pictures on Instagram and use the hashtag because it looks like I'm the only one who's made it. And this pattern is probably my, it's not my most downloaded pattern, but it's been, it's been downloaded over a hundred times. Uh, I think that was the, um, there were just a lot of them, Walter. Uh, you're thinking of the uh, boiler suit that I sewed, the garden coveralls. What the heck was that name? Oh, the Blanca flight suit. I had to think of Blanca. Now I need a little donkey to carry everything. That's exactly right. Hi, Libby. How's it going? <laughs> That's what I call myself in one of the games. I say I'm the med mule. I just call, I carry all the healing for everybody. They do all the shooting and fighting, and I'm just at the back, and I'm like, here you go. Here's some healing for you. I'm just going to hide back here. <laughs> they don't like me calling myself that, and I'm like, but donkeys are cute. All right, so let's sort out our pieces here. Yeah, okay, so I like that idea, Elizabeth. Maybe I will just flip it around. So let's look at the depth. This is the depth of the sides right here. It says the, you place this on the fold. So this piece, number M, or letter M, is the depth of the bag minus a quarter inch seam. So if I take out that, all uh, right, so this is one thing. You can actually make this, the, the bag depth, which depth, on bags is front to back, not the height. We're not talking about the height of the bag, right? We're talking about the width right here, right? So if you want to add to it, you can add to the depth of this piece and it won't change the sewing at all. It just changes how much fabric you're gonna use. So maybe I would add a little bit of depth. You know, maybe I'm not gonna add much. I'm gonna add like only a half inch. That's it, I'm gonna add a half inch depth. A little bit goes a long way. Like you might need more depth, uh, but just remember, like I'm not gonna be carrying a laptop. Um, I'm carrying an iPad. The thing about depth is that when it's on your body, you don't want to be one of those annoying people like those ladies that have those bags and they have no clue their footprint in the world with that bag and they just like bonk you in a store. Dang, that drives me crazy. My, I remember my kid getting kind of beat up by this lady with a bag once by accident. And the lady had no clue because she couldn't feel it because it was her bag hitting my kid's face. <laughs> I was just like, all of a sudden I was like, I just held the bag like this away from her because we were like in clothing racks because my kid couldn't get out of there and she was starting to panic and the woman finally became aware and she was like, oh, oh, you know, and then she just kind of walked away. She didn't really want to own up to it. <laughs> like lady get some awareness you know <laughs> yeah exactly the Blanca <laughs> yeah right Elizabeth I'm gonna mine's gonna be solid on the outside I kind of want something simple maybe I will what if I did a bag that was like okay this right and then my straps, this is looking like my project bag. Yes, I know that. But what if I put a, a pocket right here? Not a new idea, right? And then all the, uh, on the inside, you know, the, the, back there, on the, there's my back, has the uh, gusset for the iPad in here. There's a few pockets right here. And then uh, behind this front here, I want to round this so it looks less like the project bag. It looks so much like the project bag right now. Um, on the inside of the bag, doing those pockets that are gusseted, I, which I always fail to remember how I draw. <laughs> Uh, another note, if you're not going to watch this, the videos all the way away, around, uh, all the way through, remember that if you do these zip pockets that are on the front, this one has to zip 
so that it goes either here or here, but this one can only zip at that end. You don't want to cover the head under this edge right here. I say, you know, put it over here. I'm a fan of that. There's a lot of controversy over which direction pockets should zip when it's at an angle. A lot of people like it this way because you push down and it's really easy to go zip. But that means also if you forget to zip it up and it's not like halfway, like if you have it halfway zipped, your contents is secure, more secure than if this was halfway zipped and this was the open end, right? So, so this would be the inside of my bag. I'm not a big fan of the gathered pockets, I have to say. But what we found was that they weren't very secure when they were just a gusset. But what if they were just a gusset on the inside, uh, right? What if this was the inside and then there's no elastic I don't really need it to have elastic on the inside, do I? Because I'm going to have a zippered top. And then what if I made it double wide? I married these two front pockets and maybe even made the depth. The depth isn't that deep. I like that idea. Or maybe put a magnetic snap. Yeah. Hey, Emily. What do you mean? Am I talking about you, Emily? Are you the woman with a big bag, Emily? No. You would never be that unaware. I know you. If I want an elastic corner on a front pocket flap. A front pocket flap. Oh, do I have the corner an extra length from the... What do you mean, Sarah? Do you mean like, um, so if you have a, a flap, where's your elastic at? Do I have the corner? So is it more of a flap like this? I'm just gonna put that there so we know it's a flap. <laughs> On a front elastic corner. Are you thinking something like, like um, this is your pocket, this is your flap, and then this is elastic? I don't know what you mean. Elastic. Kind of be just like, I don't know, similar to the elastic flap option. <laughs> similar to the elastic, the elastic flap. I mean, this one on here, it's elastic at the top underneath the flap. The flap isn't. So if you want to do that, my only caution is that opening up your flap, if this is stitched down on all three sides, it's really hard to open it unless your flap is really shallow. <clears throat> Main flap with elastic. So you're thinking of like a little piece of elastic? Is this something obvious and I'm just forgetting that there's this option for the front flap? Oh, so not pocket for the flap. Five minutes is like, okay, similar to the elastic. Oh, okay, wait, wait. Elastic corner on a front pocket flap. Right here? But you want to do that on a um, pocket. You want to do this on, you want to make a pocket flap like this. Right? That's what you want to do. Took me a bit to get there. <laughs> Um, you, you don't have, you need a little bit to gather up, but not too much. Like I would do like 1.5, but, but this, this flap right here is shaped like this, right? It's really long. And then we stitch the elastic in right here. 
and it just goes boink and then it just it just elasticizes this section right here and because the bag is coming down it kind of hugs the corner so what was your question? If you want to last corner, do I add the corner an extra length from the gap? Yeah, you need to make this a little bit longer. This flap, this little flap here. I would do an experiment, to be honest. You'll feel better about it. But yeah, you could do that. Yeah, you could totally do that. It took me a while to get there. <laughs> All right, um, all right, so I'm gonna add uh, the depth of my bag. I did that. Uh, I need to straighten out my front because it has a curve in it right now. Bag, this one right here. I need to straighten this out for the zipper opening that I wanna add. Yeah, no problem, Sarah. That's a good idea, I like it. I think that if you have uh, magnetic snaps, it's really nice for something like that. I don't think that this ha this pocket flap has any kind of closure uh, because sometimes you don't really need them on flaps and no one ever does them. All right, so I'm gonna straighten out this front curve because I'm going to make my bag zip shut. All right, now let's make the um, zipper opening. And you know what? I might be able to use this, right? Because this is basically, it just needs to be a little bit shorter. So if this is three and seven eighths, so to make, say you want to do a zippered top like I'm doing, um, I'm doing mine like the laundry basket too. So basically what it's going to look like on the inside, can Sarah me draw this, is we'll pretend like we, we can kind of see inside the bag here, right? So inside here there will be a hem facing and then this will have a zipper going across so it's stitched down all the way and that's why I needed this to straighten out the front and then this is fabric right here and this is fabric right here so this is the top edge of the bag and then there's this hem facing that's going to be stitched down to the inside of the bag and then this is a fabric top with a zipper because I'm tired of my bag going like this in my car and then things sliding out as I drive so sound familiar all right so what we need this piece that we are going to be making is um let me um let me think about how I want to do this because the way the laundry basket does it, it makes it so that the bag is flat like this when it's zipped shut rather than it maintaining its boxy shape at the top. But when it's unzipped, the facing lays flat in there and you um, get a, um, uh, the shape comes back. Does that make sense? I have to think about this. <laughs> All right, so this piece is okay. Let's move these things out of the way here. And let me think about this with a pencil in my hand and an eraser and a little bit more spare paper. This is why I save all these offcuts of PDF patterns, right? All right, so if I do it this way and I have that in there. So for the laundry basket, how does the laundry basket go? 
oh, it has the, uh, oh yeah, so it has a stitch down facing. And then it has the extra fabric sticking out and all those pattern pieces are the same pattern piece. All right, gotta remember how I did that. Yep, exactly, Nancy. Yes, exactly. No matter how securely I put it there on my seat, it just flumps over and then everything just slides out because all my bags are so stiff. I like them to be like a bucket, you know? I think if they were like loose and, and um, soft, they would hold things in there a little bit because there's edges for things to bump against, but mine are like rigid, smooth things, buckets, you know? All right, so the way you're gonna figure this out is you're gonna take your front of your bag width and then half the width on each side of the depth of this piece here, which means you can just use this full width finished, right? So if this is uh, three and seven eighths, plus 14 is 17 and 7 eighths, plus a uh, seam allowance on each end. I get 18 and 3 eighths inches wide. So if you have the full size bag, you need, take your front, subtract the seam allowance, which is a quarter inch, all right? So measure from the fold to the seam line there. Now double that amount, right? So you have your total front or back, doesn't matter, plus the finished width of your size, your sides, M finished width plus that equals a total plus a half inch. Total equals the length. And then uh, for the width of it, let's see. Let's think about that for a second. It can't exceed this, right? So what we could do is make it about half this amount plus a little bit less. Sorry, I hope this isn't too boring. This is this is my bag designing process though. This is what it's like. Um, so if this were half the amount minus the seam allowance. Yeah, so what I think is, and you need to allow for the width of the zipper. So I'm gonna say I'm trying to visualize what that would be like. So what if we made it, um, by one and a half, and then it would be one and a half inches down on the bag. And so let's do the top one, a different width. So I'm gonna make my, the one that stitches to the bag, one and a half inches cut wide. So that'll be a one inch finished. So this little bit right here, this is gonna be one inch down, right? So then the zipper is gonna be down here. It's gonna be like one inch below the top edge of your bag, okay? And then the width of it, you, it needs to be, basically this width here. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm actually waffling with making it zip shut and maintain its um, shape. That's a little harder to sew. That's why I'm kind of thinking, do I really want to do that with you guys or not? Because you have to turn a corner. So basically you'd have a zip flap like this, All right? with your zipper, easy to sew. There's your zipper, right? This, so you'd have your two facings here, your zipper here, and then you have to set this in into that facing there. So you have to turn this corner right here. 
are you up for it or <laughs> you know so this is my problem with this um i actually am not going to do it this way because here's the big problem with this when your bag opens when you've unzipped it you have a shape like this you know it's a, it does this and it's not going to lay flat in the bag you know what i mean so that means that it's going to hinder getting in stuff in and out. I feel like it's kind of a cheap way to do it, you know? The only other way to get around that is if you use a separating zipper, but then you have to use a separating zipper to, to start your zipper again. I'm not probably not thinking of everything, but you know. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think what I'm going to do is do it like the laundry bag. I like that. I like that it lays flat. And then it means that, I wish I had one of those here. I just don't, do I? I have so many laundry ba baskets sewn. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Yeah, we're just going to leave it flat. All right, so then we need to know what this width is here, minus our zipper. And our zipper, my zipper uh, finishes about three quarters of an inch when it's sewn. So we're gonna take off three eighths there. So we're left with like one and a half, one and five eighths. Plus we need the seam allowance on each side. So basically what you can do is just fold this in half, measure across and add a quarter inch. About, that's two and three eighths for me. All right, so let's write these down on our page here, all right? In, uh, depends on what you wanna sew it in. If you want it to match the lining, go for it. In my outer fabric, I'm going to have a piece, two pieces that are 18 and 3 eighths by one and a half inches. And then um, I'm gonna have two that are 18 and 3 eighths by two and 3 eighths. And in lining, same, two at 18 and 3 eighths by two and 3 eighths. Don't you love those eighths measurements? Sorry, they're not metric, guys. All right, so if you're doing the regular size bag, outer two at 18. I hope I'm doing my math correctly. We're gonna double check though later. And then in lining, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write it out and then it'll show you on the screen. In case you need a visual, you can take a screenshot. So this is the zip facing, hem facing, Performance math is not my strong suit, so I, I will probably make sure that everything is correct later. This is a one and a half. So if you want to do the zipper closure on the top. Oh, that's a great Christmas gift. I made one laundry basket as a Christmas gift. <laughs> you could sew just the long sides and finish the ends a bit longer than if super concerned about security, put snaps at the ends. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Let's put the side. All right, so we figured out the, I figured out my zip facing. What else do I need to make sure? So I'm going to make the, um, Gusset pocket. This is the front gusset pocket. I'm going to make it wider. 
I'm gonna make it double wide with a flap with a snap on it because I've been hoarding a few magnetic snaps. Um, let's put them in my sewing bin so I actually use them finally. Where'd they go? Maybe they're in a little... Oh, there, there, right there. Okay. So I've had I've had this so long, the, the container's gotten yellow. So I have a, um, let's see. One. Do I only have one? What the heck? Where's all the other pieces to this? I have one magnetic snap. These things are expensive. Shoot, I thought I had like four. Maybe they've fallen out in here. Well, that's no fun. I'll double check for him. I am pretty good at putting snaps on now though. <laughs> All right, so here's your water bottle sleeve. And what you're gonna wanna do for this, let's look at this real quick. All right, so get your water bottle out. Maybe put it up against something, you know. And then you're gonna wanna check, will this go around your water bottle plus some seam allowance? And remember, you don't wanna make this hard to aim your water bo bottle in there. It's just gonna be drive you crazy and you'll just shove the bottle in there anyway. But if you really need it to be separate, like mine are stainless steel, so they can kind of bang things, or, you know, I don't want banging things. So, um, and plus I don't like the sound that it makes. So I'm gonna make sure, this is a little bigger than the one I use. And I think that's gonna be a good idea then to figure it out. So let's fold back, let's fold back like a half inch just so I have a little bit of ease there and figure out how much, and you can use a tape measure also. Let's do that tape measures, underrated, right? So that's an eight and a half. So I'll make this 10 inches, hmm, eight and a half, plus the seam allowance, plus a little ease. We'll make this nine and a half inches wide or long. And for me, I will forget to do that on the fly. So I'm just gonna add it to it real quick. You can interface this too. If your fabric's really floppy and you're only using lining, I would interface it so it has a little body and it doesn't just crumple and get the, the top edge be always like mashed down. You know what I mean, right? You know what I mean. I said, Okay, so I need it eight and a half plus a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch. I'm going to add three quarters of an inch ease. I can't remember what our rationale was, but we went back and forth on this a lot. Pretty sure. So mine's nine and three quarters. I use a clean canteen and I use two different sizes. I use a, a skinny insulated water bottle and then I use an insulated... Um, um, a little chunkier one that's for coffee. All right, that piece is done. And then I'm gonna make this double the size. So all we need to do is add this width, which is three and a half inches. So we just need to add three and a half inches anywhere in here. So let's actually draw a parallel line here. Cut it open. Quick and dirty. And then I think that this will fit my wallet nicely. 
I may change some of this on the fly when I start like getting pieces sewn and kind of deciding, is this really what I want? Since I'm not making a prototype for myself <clears throat> and you can bet I normally would. <laughs> Lay this on here and line it up. So that way I didn't change any of these pieces that sew. I know that two of these pockets fit in that space and that's how I know I could double it. And so this pocket's gonna finish seven inches wide. I think that'll be perfect, because this is the gusset, right? So it's gonna stick up like this, and then my wallet can slip in there. <laughs> Ray, way with them crazy amounts lately. You're harvesting sweet potatoes with a friend? That sounds so sweet. <laughs> Have fun, friend. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You always go over and above. I appreciate the support. Thank you. Have fun. <laughs> oh, who was it that told us they ate raw sweet potatoes? I tried one. I didn't hate it. Still a little scared of it, but I might try it again. Was that Carrie that does that? Who does that? All right, cut two outer fabric. This piece is done. What else, uh, what else on my list here? What about, okay, so the mask pocket, I think can be one of the little zippered pockets on the front. Small zip, iPad, glasses. Okay, I just took away my eyeglass pocket. So maybe I need another eyeglass pocket now unless I can fit it in this here. So if I put um, my mask in here and my eyeglasses in the other one, I think that's a potential possibility that would work. Absolutely need a place for my eyeglasses. And all the rest of this, the lip stuff, that I can accept that going with my mask. <laughs> All right, all right, I think I'm good. Oh yeah, I have a straight pocket here too. So there's a zip pocket and a straight pocket. Okay, that works. Perfect. Um, keys. I'm gonna put a loop to clip my keys to. So we need to write ourselves a note or Add it to here. I'm gonna put clip a put a um, clip for keys. I feel like I might forget this. Like I want a stitched loop on the inside, so I don't have to dig. And something I can clip because I have a carabiner on my keys. My phone. Okay, my phone, I wanna do on the end, on the outside, on the end. Will this, would this originally fit on the side here? It would. Okay. So I think I will put this also on the ends. So that I'm gonna have a gusseted pocket on the end of my bag for my phone. So I need one of these again. going to photocopy it real quick. Okay, so I have my phone. Copy! Oh my gosh. Touch screen my butt. All right. Uh, mask, iPad, glasses, keys, wallet, papers. I love how phone's not even on this list. Phone. I had keys on there twice though. Zip top, calendar, 
Why aren't you photocopying? Because it wants to know if it's black, color, photo. It does it at all the same quality, which is poorly. <laughs> You have smart keys. What are, what are smart keys, Nancy? I have to tie my shoe. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. I have to tie my shoe because we're, we have a streak going where I don't fall on camera. Uh, what are smart keys? I mean, my, my car has a fob, you know. I don't have a key for my car. All right. Phone, pocket. So this needs to match the width of the side here. What I, my experience is when you're doing these little gusseted pockets, um, and maybe it's just me, like I, I could be a better sewer or something. Um, this, gusset it, it tends to you don't want to get it caught in the seam so you have to be really careful don't make this too big so i could stand a loot or, or gain like a quarter of an inch to make it fit the width here oh your car keys yeah yeah my husband's car has a um credit a credit card to get in and out and i absolutely hate it <laughs> because you can't just keep the card in your wallet you have to get it out to because if your wallet's too thick, it's not going to go through. So you have to hold it up to the door and then it unlocks. And, um, and then you also need to put it on the console, center console. There's no marking or anything. There's no marking on the outside of the door, by the way, either. You just have to kind of go, <laughs> where is it? And the same with the console. Um, he can use his phone. Like his, if he just has his phone on him, it's fine. That's all he needs. He doesn't have to have the credit card thing, but I do. And I ended up making a sleeve for it because it came in this black sleeve. It's a black card in a black sleeve. I was like, what the heck? One just falling straight between the car seat and the console. That's it. Like it's over. Right. So, um, I made a card holder out of fabric that's blueberry printed because he named he named his car Blue Baze, Boo Baze, because that's what Cricket used to call blueberries, was Boo Baze's. And so he named it Boo Baze. And I made the sleeve out of that. And so then I can find it, right? But yeah, I'm sorry. I, I don't like having clunky keys and stuff either, but at the same time, that is not gonna work for me very good. I'm I'm just not very good at managing those kinds of things. All right, so I'm gonna do just shy of a quarter of an inch here. And then now we've made this the width of the side here. Now, if you're gonna add a flap, this flap actually has to stay inside the width of this as well. It might even need to be a little bit smaller. And um, that's because you wouldn't wanna sew down the flap on the sides there. So I'm gonna probably have to trim this down just a tad. So let's just, um, let's not cut that one down because I need that one for the other pocket. Oh no, I need to make it bigger for the other pocket. We can cut this one down, all right. So this one, <laughs> did you guys see that limited series? I feel like it was on, on um, like Masterpiece, PBS Masterpiece, where it's, it's actually pretty good. It's kind of sci-fi-esque, takes place in London, um, and it's in the future a little bit. Um, and one of the daughters, she wants to become AI. That's just one of the storylines in it. Like she literally wants to be integrated into the internet and that's how she wants to survive. <laughs> and that's just one of the storylines in it, but it's actually really good. And it's kind of like, wow, I mean, I wouldn't want that, but <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Okay, so we added three and a half there for that inside pocket. Do I wanna add that same amount? 
I really hate it when pattern drafters don't put the grain line in the center of the piece. What was she thinking? <laughs> she was thinking she didn't have enough space to write her huge font she likes on pattern pieces. <laughs> All right, so we'll do this. We're gonna take this. So I'm making a flap for this big pocket that I made. I might have to adjust this a little bit since we're not trying it out first. Yay! <laughs> do you just use it or covet it? Use it, cause I'm gonna get more. Years and years, Mafia. Wait, what? What did I say? <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna start it off right here. Just get that shape right there. And then we have a line here. And then let's draw a straight line here. All right. And now we're going to make this uh, one and three quarters. It's on the half. Whoops, one and three quarters. So then we're gonna line up this edge here, right here to that new line, and then draw that. Okay, so now I have some. I'm gonna draw my top line here, and then here is the. And, and then here's that point, and so we're gonna smooth it in there. Well, it looks like a really big flap, honestly. It may be too flappy. Oh, is that what it's called, Mafia? That doesn't sound familiar. It, it didn't have a, t every time I would, I would look at it, I'd be like, wait, it says I'm watching this. And I'd be like, oh yeah, that's, this is that show. So I remember the title didn't really um, go with the show. That might be it. I can't even remember the other storylines, but there's a lot of, lot of different storylines. Um, there's the, the son or there's a guy in the family who's, partner goes back to his home country and then he can't come back and he ends up in a refugee camp but it's futuristic it's the whole thing is really pretty good but it has got that little sci-fi bent i remember his story um dang oh 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 i know um i don't know the title of it but there was a a thing that they all talked to that was like an alexa or um sorry if i'm like making some of your guys's you know like people have those in their homes where they say i don't want to say it because i don't want to tip any of yours off maybe yours is based recognition but you know it's like hey alexa and i can't remember the name of it but all families had them and they would talk to each other all the time with it <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. You loved watching Black Mirror, isn't that scary? In the name of stash busting. I love it, Sarah. <laughs> oh no, Barbara. That's years and years. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the young woman wants to like be integrated. It's kind of kooky that way. Like it's got kind of like it seems so like today, and then there's that strain. You're like, what is happening in this world? How is this possible in this world? Yeah, I'm really, I'm watching Foundation right now on um, the Apple TV app. It's really good. You say echo. <laughs> okay, here's my, this flap right here. So I'm gonna do, on, on my um, flap here, I think it's one outer and one lining, and that seems about right. If this is in the inside, I'm gonna do two lining. I may even just do this in lining as well. I want something kind of stiff though. Mm, we'll just do one lining. Circle always means cut, by the way. And self and outer are the same thing. 
large interior pocket. I promise I'm getting to the part where I'm gonna cut this out. I'm just making all these changes. So that pocket is done. This is my now my outer end pocket and we need to make this flap even though I made this bigger, I need to make my flap smaller because flaps are usually a little bit bigger than the pocket so they cover the hole. I'm gonna do a um, magnetic snap and I'm kind of thinking of squaring this off now so that it's even more secure over the sides. I like Sarah's idea of making it elasticize like the top of the flap. So I could do that too. And to do that, like I'm just gonna keep the same depth but we'll just, we'll just trace off this, this uh, pocket here. And we'll make it just a, like even a quarter of an inch total smaller. That's only an eighth of an inch on each side. And as long as you're careful with your sewing, um, you won't catch it on the sides there. The, when you're doing these kinds of pockets and things, it's a really good idea to, especially if you want to sell your bag, like say you're, you're making one of these and you're like, I'm going to make a good bag and I'm going to like make them and sell them. T test some of these things first because I'm doing this as a one-off, you know, like I'm not proving, like making sure it works. So I've done enough bags to kind of know, but there's always, I always am like, wow, how did I not think of that, you know? And, and it was really funny what that would happen on because even Rayanne would get caught up in it sometimes and she'd be like, oh my gosh, I am so excited about this, for this bag design, can't you sew it today? You know, like sew it while I'm here. And I'd be like, no, 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 we have to finish this. I'm gonna sew it later. And she, she always left way earlier than me. She always wanted to see it. And so I would always leave it there for her in the morning so she could check it out. But um, sometimes I, I would just like leave it with a big sad face on it. And when she'd see me first thing, she'd be like, how did that not work? I'm like, we just didn't think of this, you know? And it's just, you just never know. Don't ever assume no matter how simple it is. In fact, I will say the simplest projects sometimes are the hardest to design and get right. Um, and um, you will be shocked by what doesn't work. It could be the fat because of the fabric you picked. It could be um, what you wanted it to do is doesn't quite work. So just make sure you always do a sample. So that's just my my caveat. All right. So here's I'm gonna do this a square flap. I'm gonna remind, remind myself that it has a snap there, and we're gonna do one outer. one lining. All right, so now we have our phone pocket and the flap. Is that everything? Yeah, exactly, Nancy. Yeah, and that's the other thing is that, uh, when you get so excited that you're like, I won't forget this. <laughs> you're gonna forget it, <laughs> trust me. So this pocket on the inside, so here is the laptop sleeve. It's this one with the gusset right here. It has a pocket on the back that has a cord pocket. So that was one of the things people wanted was a pocket to put their cords in for their laptop um, or maybe charging devices and things. And then we also put, this is it right here, we also put a uh, EpiPen pocket in there as well. So that's what that is. You could use it for whatever you want. I'm not even sure I need those. Let's see. We have the mask pocket. Let's write them all down. So I know I'm not using the same pocket twice because in my head sometimes that happens. It's my front and that's my back. All right, front and back. I'm looking for the back pocket. Is it just in here? This must be right here. Okay, here's my back pocket, and this is gonna be my papers and documents. That's really important for me. I'm always schlepping uh, papers I don't wanna bend. Um, this is mask. And then this is glasses. 
mask, glasses, iPad. I always recommend doing this too because you'll be like, wait, I earmarked this pocket for three different things. The water bottle. I know I wrote that on here. Did I not? Okay, water. Um, this is my wallet. The binder is the bag. The lip stuff is the mask. It's in there. Um, this is the bag. The calendar is the bag. A uh, shoulder strap. Yep, I'm going to do that. Zip top, we did that. A uh, phone is this one here. We're not missing anything. Okay. <clears throat> the um, phone pocket is going to line up to these notches on this piece that are the corners of the bag. And I need to transfer this to the outside edge here since we made this wider. And so you're going to notch these top notches only on the lining and you're going to notch these bottom notches here on all of them. Oh, this is outer. This is, oh yeah, yeah, and the webbing. Oh, you can do them on all layers. This notch lining, oh, leave open between notches. Okay, so we turn the bag through there. All right. Good to know I didn't remember that. So I don't have this earmarked, this cord pocket here. So I'm gonna think about that. Oh, really? Interesting, Barbara. So what about that? So this was the EpiPen pocket. So if this were just double, like this is on the fold and you didn't stitch it down where is that? that is, this isn't it. There's another pocket piece. It's called the precious pocket, number I, or letter I. Is it in here? Because these are the pocket flaps. Oh, here it is. Good thing we checked that. So yeah, this is the cord pocket, and then this is the EpiPen. So if you didn't notch it and divide it, would it fit to? I didn't know that. Hmm. Oh, thanks, Crockett. <laughs> card cat. Wait. <laughs> These pockets are going to need a card catalog to find it. <laughs> no, I'm going to figure it. I know what a card catalog is. I can just, just thinking about them, um, I can remember the smell. Oh, interesting, Barbara. Wow. Okay, let's cut it out. Let's commit. Yeah, right, I know. So this is, this measures, on the 85% size, this measures about 12 inches across. And for, you know, maybe four inches, it's not very deep. Well, we made it kind of secure at the back and the bottom of the bag because, you know, admittedly, it's not something you need all the time. You didn't want it in the way. You didn't want it to fall out. So it's just kind of secure in the deep part of the bag. So, but this is the 85% size. All right, let's cut mine out. And I'm gonna cut a wallet out. Yay, a new wallet. Cricket says every time she goes to this one sh store in town, because um, I made her wallet, um, and I made hers out of this fabric with a Shiba Inu on it. <laughs> she says every time, they're like, will you tell your mom to bring some in and we can sell them? <laughs> She's like, I just nod and smile now, mom, because they don't want to hear that I won't tell them, tell you. <laughs> all right, you got to move all this stuff out of the way. 
binding. All right, so now we're gonna separate our pieces out. Everything that needs outer fabric. And then I'm gonna make a pile for things that get both. So then you don't miss anything. Both, only outer. Both, both, outer, 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 both. Both and both. And some of those get interfacing. So I don't know if I, how I feel about sewing some of these things in this in this uh, canvas because it seems a little too stiff for the inside of the bag, you know? Oh, that's smart, Barbara. That's a good idea. I think they are still there. Libraries still have card catalogs, I'm pretty sure. This is some wide fabric. Let's let's just start cutting some of these pieces. Um, we're gonna do the both pile first. That way I can think about it. Can I cut this piece off right here? I can just cut this piece off. This is very wide. Anytime you have something curly, the curl side down. Oh, really, Janice? Oh, how weird. What did they do with those? Okay, I do want the divider to be in this. But these might be in, I think I'll do that in it. I won't need a stiffener if I'm using the wax. I have to admit, these pieces being on the fold on the wax, uh, you know. This screen is incredible. I could eat this. The, the, the cameras aren't doing it justice. It's just, it's... It's so good. I had bought some of their canvas before and I was kind of like, oof, this stuff is so stiff. Um, and uh, I don't know, it was a dark, darker green. It was stiffer than this, same stuff. It just kind of varies from batch to batch. And I told myself, make sure you don't make the mistake. Like I couldn't remember who it was. And I didn't want to make the mistake of buying from them again. So I thought I unfollowed them from Instagram and then they posted this and I was like, I have to have that. And I'm so glad I gave it another shot because I really like it. And after sewing with it on the cocoon, you know, it wasn't very hard to sew. I think I cut one of these out and um, I'm folding that so that I can do this. You know, um, I can't really use um, pins. There really is nothing more satisfying to cut than waxed cotton. And when you can watch it, like when you can watch your rotary, rotary knife, it, it's, it's like, it does this little like white or lighter color along the blade, it's very cool. And it's so easy to cut. And um, yeah, it's very, very satisfying. So when you're doing corners like this, Cut up into the corner and then lift it up and then do the other side, go straight into there by pulling this out of the way. And then you don't have to worry about it and you get a nice crisp corner. All right, so I'm gonna just move all this so out of the way. I'm gonna bring my trash can closer. I'm not gonna put this in my bin. All right, so let's carefully put this on the fold here. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna mark the center where I'm folding it. The sewing is gonna go faster than cutting this out, I promise. Okay. I promise. 
And, and in fact, you could really do this in stages where you're like, okay, I'm just going to attach the pockets to the front. I'm just going to attach the pockets to the back. I'm just going to assemble the sleeve. And then when you go to put it all together, I promise it's not that hard. All right. Wow, really, Janice? Dang. Yes, some people are cut out for their job. I'm not going to do the interfacing. I would like to do some padding. I will do some lining. So this one still needs something to cut. So we're going to set that aside. I'm going to move all this out of the way. I'm going to add my buttons and buttonholes to the Fairfield today. All right, we're going to do the front bag. I'm really not going to use a lot of this fabric. Okay. I can see the grain line on this, which is really nice. Hey, I have an idea, a question for you guys. Oh, I wanted to thank again, thank you guys for whoever answered my poll last Sunday and Monday on Instagram about uh, what you would want out of pattern reviews. I got over like 200 responses, which is really amazing. And I yesterday finally typed them all into different categories and into a, a spreadsheet. Um, it was really, really enlightening. The clear, clear top three things was you would want to know are, if the directions are clear, um, if the drafting is good, and if, the, if it fits the way it should. Um, and, and I think that goes without saying, but it was just so universal. It really speaks to some of the frustrations people have So that was pretty cool. Some folks kind of missed the point of it and just started sending me like, um, and, and it's not a bad thing, but uh, they sent me like suggestions of patterns to review. And let's just be honest, I can't review every single pattern out there. <laughs> I mean, if people want to send me patterns to review, I will, that's great, and I can send them back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I can't do them all. But um, so that was really great. So I have another question for you guys. All right, I have a question. What would you guys think of, how do I phrase this? I'm trying to think of the fo top four fabric stores everybody in the world has probably heard of to shop at to buy fabric, especially for apparel. So I'm going to go first. I think I would definitely put mood fabrics. Every, I feel like everybody's heard of mood. And I mean, not everybody I know. Mood and then um, Minerva. And then I'm in, I think Blackbird would also be recognizable by most as well. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, that's a good one, Nancy. I saw that. Yeah, every pattern drafter should do layers. Yes, Elizabeth, that's another, I know, that's a common thing. There's two pattern companies I've been buying from lately, and I think some people really like that, but it is, for me, I'm just like, oh, can you please give me a bulleted list? I don't want to sift through all this information. And that the thing is, like, if I were to say something like that or get sponsored by them and, and then, like, kind of skim over all that, I might do, I would probably make a mistake because there's something in all of that stuff that I miss. And then they're going to be like, see, you're not reading the directions. I don't want to take an hour to read the directions. I don't have to. I just need to know what is the step. Am I attaching the collar? That's all I need to know. Attach the collar. If you're doing something crazy, tell me. Like, attach the collar, but make sure you read the directions for the method, you know? Notch the side on outer fabric only. Okay. You only notch that half because that I on the full size bag, the big one, 
we <clears throat> divided up that pocket to make it a bit more manageable in size. I don't think I'll need to do a notch on this one. Okay. All right, so what do you guys think about my, my fabric store question? Would you guys agree with that? Would you agree that... Am I doing these on the cross screen? What, isn't this the selvage? I thought I was doing that on the, I did, right? I <laughs> remember now. I have the front bag, the laptop sleeve. I don't have this yet. Oh, okay, great. Cool. We're gonna set this aside. Yes, exactly, Elizabeth. And the, and the thing is, this is why I always include a um, bulleted list or like a, um, a TLDR or what, what, what do I call it? I call it like the um, at a glance. Sewing it at a glance, like you need these pieces to cut and this is the order of operations. You like my face cam to be on the other side? Right now, we can do that. Um, where'd my box go? Oh, there it is. I have to move the camera then. It's kind of bright over there. That's why I uh, put the face the other way. I think it's block and circumstances that are confusing to a whole paragraph of separate steps. Yes. Yeah, I, I wish they would just title the step. And then explain, oh, sorry, I just bonked the microphone because I have to reach around. I hope that's the right spot. I think that's not the right spot. There, maybe. Is that okay? That's okay. It was over what I was cutting. Was it really? Oh, wow. Am I zoomed in? Hmm. All right, I'm gonna cut a piece off. That is the right height for that. I'm trying to see the green. Are none of you really going to comment on my fabric store thing? Because I'm really curious about this. Yeah, I, I think there's nothing wrong with having the explanations. I think that's really, really important because um, I do refer to those further explanations sometimes because they may do it a little differently than me. So sometimes I'll like I'll say, oh, uh, it says attach, you know, sew the collar and collar stand. Oh, okay. And then when I look at it, I'm like, wait, what's this notch to? Maybe I should read it. That's great. I need that too. Um, I just want a title so that I know what we're about to do. So did I really not cut this? I didn't, did I? Because there's the back handle placement and I didn't see that before. The reason I'm not folding the fabric is it's wax cotton. Yeah, I know it's gonna get all wrinkly, but a crease is a little harder to get around, you know? So. Oh, really, Hannah? Okay, see, that's good to know. So who would you think of as fabric companies that you think most people have heard of because I also think someone maybe in Oceania or, you know, like in Australia or New Zealand is probably not going to shop at those three. <laughs> they, they might uh, if there's something special. But that's just really far and it's really expensive. So... You know, it's better if you do this to like put your ruler up and make sure, oh, did I actually get it on there straight, you know? This is this is pretty straightforward fabric to do it on. Do 
Yeah, right. They're, they're most popular on Instagram and not everybody's on Instagram. Mood Fabric Mart. Stone Mountain is another one for me, but I was thinking maybe I thought that because it's regional, you know? So I'm, I'm glad you said that, Blythe and Bonnie. And nice to see you. You shot Mood for Apparel, but a lot of Etsy stores. Yeah, Minerva and Blackbird are also international to you, Walter. Yeah, and you think of, are you in Australia, Mafio? You've heard of those store, hard to know which ones everyone else has heard of. Fabric Store, new, oh, it's called Fabric Store. It's what it's called. I was thinking she just meant the Fabric Store near her. You're looking for a good denim source, Nancy. Um, I would look at Closet Core, uh, Blackbird, um, maybe Hearts. I haven't checked Hearts lately. You have your favorite stores and then you hear about a new to me one like Style Maker, right? And then suddenly I was talking about them. I feel like I'm last friend. Yeah, right, Libby? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel that way too. I really like Maker's Fabric. No one really talks about them, but um, I really like them. And they have, there's been a few like this green color things in, in people's fabric posts lately and it's killing me. Like Maker's Fabric has a green linen like this color and I want it so bad. And then someone else posted one May, it may have been Blackbird where it's a window pane plaid. So it's this green and it's, oh, it's killing me. I was <laughs> like, dang it. <laughs> oh, especially stretch. Yeah, so that's another um, thing to look for stretch or non-stretch. Yeah, I think Closet Core and Blackbird. Um, I have never shopped on Mood. So would you, have you guys heard of Vogue Fabrics? Because I had never really heard of them until I think Barbara and Libby were talking about them. And I didn't realize that they're like kind of a big fabric source. This is my water bottle pocket. I'm still making this pile of things like, yeah, you cut that, but it still needs something else cut out of it so you don't, so I don't forget, you know. Uh, this is on the fold. If you can't place this long piece on the fold, just add a quarter inch seam allowance right here or whatever seam allowance you want and then cut two. Oh, LA Finch. I would love to shop there too. Spoon flower, yes, can be used for apparel for sure. Hi, Lindsay. How's it going? Oh, good morning. <laughs> Yeah, I think Delwyn's here uh, from uh, New Zealand, and it's pretty warm or pretty early, and maybe Mafia too. Yeah, you guys are the early crowd. Mood has so many denim choices and lots of info on for choosing to. Great. Okay, cool. Oh, that's interesting. I'm kind of thinking of doing uh, two pieces on, uh, uh, seamed right now. I we just want to avoid this, you know? I could avoid this by uh, putting it on the fold. So the cord pocket, I'm not sure if I need this. My flaps. And then we gotta start making some decisions. So I'm thinking that if I don't cut some of these, I don't need, since these aren't on the front of my bag, I'm taking Elizabeth's idea of putting my front on the inside, the pockets that are on the front. So I'm just gonna flip it around. I don't need to cut them in this wax, especially like this one's gonna hold my glasses. That'd be nice if it was soft, right? Uh, this one has the mask. That's fine. Maybe I just do one of them in there in that. Uh, this one I don't need. Okay, so I do want my, do I want my wallet? 
I'm thinking I could stiffen the fabric up like I did that day. This one I do. And I don't know if I need the precious pocket either. We're still thinking about that. All right, so these I think can be, I think this one I'm gonna do out of this and they, these I'm gonna do out of lining. All right, I made some decisions, eek. Okay, and then this, I'm gonna cut two of this. I'm gonna cut two of this because I, I wanna avoid that right there. Oh, Michael Levine, right. Yeah, Barbara, I like that idea. Uh, yeah, the mustard yellow cone mills. Yeah, that's my Dawn jeans. Non-stretch, those are great. Uh, you can get that from L.A. Finch. Laying all the patterns the way they go together. Yeah, Barbara, if they fit on your fabric that way, I think that's great. My fabric doesn't fit on the table, so I'm sorry I'm not doing it that way. But I think that's nice because it kind of reiterates where it's going, reinforces it. I've never shopped at Michael Levine's, but I've heard of that for sure. Okay. These are my two flaps. I don't like that this flap isn't really in keeping with my other, but um, I'm going for function right now. So the large interior is this one. This is my phone. Okay. Okay. And then this is the mask. Okay, yeah. <laughs> At least I can see the grain. I am so excited to sew this. I want to start today. I was gonna lay that on there, but I cut up into this, so we won't do that. Yeah, I think this would be an excellent ASMR. If you could have a really nice camera on the canvas and you didn't see the pattern pieces and you just saw the way it cut, oh. So good. You've been, who's, where, oh my, God. oh, it's still open. Oh, okay. Oh, really, Cheryl? You like the canvas from the cocoon pouch? Nice. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think like a stiff canvas. You know, if you have that canvas in your, your, in your uh, stash and you're just like, this canvas, man, it's just like, it's not very soft. I don't really want to make a, you know, pillow for the couch in it. Um, the cocoon would be good for that because it doesn't need to be soft and you don't have stiffener in that pot pattern, so it does help. These are kind of hard to, to like throw away, you know? I was gonna say, oh, maybe I could make a, you know, I have a lot of these little coasters. Look at this spooky one. Look at this fabric. Isn't it amazing with that sp fake spider? <laughs> this is a sample for binding on something, but I guess you could make a coaster out of it. It wouldn't slide on your table, which would be kind of nice, and it would provide a moisture barrier. Maybe I'll save it. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Joanne's prices work out for something like that really well. That's nice. All right, I'm gonna cut two of these. Let's 
just need one of these. So I have this idea of, actually, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to spoil it. I think you guys would love this idea. And that's why I want to know the fabric store thing. I, I really want to know where we think the top place is. I mean, I guess I could do spoon flower. That one's worldwide, but I feel like it's a pretty pricey option. It's not an like, everyday option. I would argue that's the same for somewhere like um, Stone Mountain and Daughter. Uh, may, I think Blackbird's pretty affordable, except for if you're having to ship internationally. Same with Minerva. I don't know Mood. I've never shopped on Mood. See, you can avoid doing this if you just cut your corner by going up, away, and then across. Paper. All right, I'm going to cut my, what is this? I call this the sides, letter M. I'm gonna cut this in two. I'm gonna put my weight over that end so that I don't forget <laughs> because it happens. So if you are using a flap on this bag and you increase the depth, don't forget that your flap may need a little extra. It most likely doesn't. The flaps aren't, you know, I think that they're, generous enough that you could get away with adding a half inch in depth and you're going to be fine. All right, so let's add a seam allowance here. Okay. I think I'm down to my inner, uh, my lining. This is, might be the sewing drama part because <laughs> I have all these scrap pieces. Oh, nice, Cheryl. That's so smart. Uh, this is directional. I love this print. <laughs> Looks kind of bad on the camera, but I think in person it's pretty cute. I like really small, dense florals and micro prints in general. You guys know that. So let's see. Can I get... I think I can get the basic body of my bag. So let's pull out our pieces here. This is uh, the my phone pocket, my gusset pocket, and the mask pocket, and you. None of these need more cutting, but these need lining. I'm going to cut my angle pocket C and the straight pocket D in lining. The water bottle sleeve needs lining. And then for the basic bag body, the back pocket, the front and the back po uh, back of the, the laptop sleeve, G, uh, G, those are all going to get lining as well. And I think those except for the sleeve will fit on this fabric. Let's see. It's kind of nice that I have these whole pieces now. Oh, here's this piece too. We don't need to do that one in this. I can cut one there, one there, <laughs> two of these here, and not that. So we're going to skip Where's the piece I just had there? I had one there, one there, and then these two. That's what I'm gonna do, okay. These are done. And these all need, okay. So I have this little pile here. All these need lining still. 
Is my table zoomed in? It just feels so tiny today on the screen. Four H green quarter. Oh my gosh, you've got corduroy in this. It is zoomed. What the heck? What is this? Oh, it's a piece of paper. Is that okay? That better? I didn't realize it was zoomed. Usually goes back to its defaults. All right, so we're gonna get two of this. I can do this one on the fold. Great. And uh, it doesn't matter if you have a directional print which way you cut this one. It's gonna be upside down one way or the other. You will need binding for this project, so if you want it to match your, you know, lining or something, or maybe the outer, just remember that you need to allow for that. I'm going to outer fabric only, one side of lining only. All right. I'm just going to notch both. I don't really mind. We need our key tether. We need the corners of the bag and we need the lining right there. Notch to turn it all through. Okay, these pieces are ready. Oh my goodness, that's so awesome. Your husband eats cookies. I yesterday made my favorite cookies because those muffins I made, I knew I shouldn't have stored them on the counter, but I was just kind of like, like them being room temperature. And at one point I was like, you need to put those in the fridge because you know, anytime there's like fruit, like berries, it, they can get moldy. And so we were watching them come closely and they finally, I had to get rid of them. But I made some cookies yesterday, which I like to call kind of like a granola <laughs> oatmeal cookie. Now you just use that oatmeal, it's called oatmeal flake, I think cookie recipe in the old joy of cooking. But then I also add chocolate chips, <laughs> coconut, chopped almonds, pumpkin seeds, and cranberries as well. They're so good. Yeah, Del, when I could. I haven't cut that right yet. That's such a smart idea. I am so really abusive to my glasses. It's kind of embarrassing. All right, so this one has a, on the outer notch this side only. I honestly don't remember what that's for, so we'll find out. Okay. The front. I'm not doing interfacing or stiffener. If you want that, go for it. I'm not because my canvas is so stiff. It'll be a pain in other reasons, but yeah. <laughs> no, it is a hefty cookie. It's so good. They're beautiful. Yeah, you can just take an oatmeal recipe, oatmeal cookie recipe, and add any. I add everything to them. If I don't have all that stuff, it's okay. Like mostly, I always end up getting coconut, almonds, um, and chocolate chips in there. I love it when I have pumpkin seeds. I'm not a big fan of sesame, not sesame. Uh, I like sesame seeds. I'm not a big fan of sunflower seeds in there. They just have an odd taste to me. I like them, but not like they're in my granola right now and they're bugging me. Okay, so this one has a back handle placement marking right here. Don't miss it because it kind of looks a lot like my uh, taping indicators. And this is like a little handles because I really like a bag that has like a small handle, not just the shoulder strap, the, yeah, because it has a uh, messenger bag shoulder strap usually. So 
So if you want that, don't forget it. All right, so this is all I'm left with with this. <laughs> Let's do this outer flap. Hmm. Oh, I could get, I can get this. This is actually even better. Ooh, look at that. And then I can get this. And these are pieces that are actually showing on the outside. Okay. I could do the water bottle sleeve right here. That would be a good use of the fabric. It's sideways, but I think that's fine. Yeah, and I, I only, uh, it's just he and I, so I didn't bake them all. And so then all the, all the rest of it, I just put on a cookie sheet in balls and froze it. And then we just slide them off into a bag and then you can like bake one <laughs> so dangerous but then you know like when we run out of the ones i've baked already if we're just like oh let's let's just have one cookie you know each or two each you know you can just bake those two right out of the freezer they bake a little differently i think it's good a little bit to like let it sit out for a couple minutes but honestly, they, they just kind of stay a little bit more like a little blump, you know? The binding should be um, in the materials for sale tab, Barbara. Yeah, isn't it great, Terry? I, I think it's like, it's so great because also I don't want to waste cookies and I do think like even as much as I love them I do get sick of them after a little bit and then they just sit there and then they get stale and then they get gross and then we throw them away so I'd much rather do that did you find it Barbara fleece made of plastic well uh you could use cotton fleece though hey Denise it's a good point uh, not all fleece is made of plastic bottles. Recycled stuff is. Do you think that that, um, too much friction or why? Do you think that would scratch the lenses? It's a good point. What if I, because I have some like really soft fleeces. I also have some wool felt. I could do wool felt. This bag's not gonna get washed. I could just use knit. Hmm. It's hard to imagine some of this stuff, you know, scratching, but you're probably right. I have fleece, I think. Let's see. Yeah, let me think about where I'm gonna put that. Oh, you make a log? Gosh, mine's so filled with stuff. I wonder if I can make a log out of it. Hmm. I think it was, oh, line it. Oh, I see that line the glasses with the microfiber cloth. You know what? I have so many of those. I think, let's see. Do I know where they are? Here's one. All right, sorry, just something like one more spot. <laughs> I know I had a bunch of these in little packets because when I got a bunch of glasses, they sent me like, I don't want a ton of these. I want the stuff you squirt. I have this one that's new from Warby Parker. Hmm. Just when you have a use to use all those, that might fit in there. This is the glasses pocket. And so this is how it goes. 
So let's think about how this goes together so that you know what your... I did one of these in the... Um... Okay, here we go. All right, so this is how the pocket goes together. Oh, shoot. It goes B, C, D, all right? These are how the three layers go. This is a pocket and it the mask would be the um, top pocket, whereas C is the under pocket to this one, all right? And then the way this is sewn is, I'm pretty sure there's a pocket right here and then there's a pocket behind here as well. And so D is a pocket attached to the bag and then uh, with a zipper at the top. And so you could face the back of this with something fuzzy or the bag as well. <laughs> Maybe it would, Nancy, huh? It should be at the, is it hard to find? It should be just at the materials and kits at the top, the tab at the top. If you flatten them before freezing, they spread like fresh ones. Oh, that's what I should do. I should flatten them a little bit. I never thought to do that. That's so funny. Huh. All right, so this one's cut. I don't care about this one so much. That piece is cut. I think I'll just use a piece of fleece or something because this is kind of, this stuff's so slimy. You know, and it doesn't quite fit this piece here. I could, you know, cut this little sliver off and sew it over here and then just sew it to the back. It doesn't even matter. Like it doesn't have to go up to the seam allowance, right? Because there's or all the way through. I could cut that, sew that. And then at least the back of the pocket would have that on there. It's kind of an idea. I like it. It's statically charged right now really annoying. All right, so we have these. So I have one big pattern piece left, so I need to make sure I can get that one. Maybe this, oh, I have enough of this one. I love this fabric. Oh, I do, I do, okay. This is how much I love this fabric that I've saved a tiny little scrap of it. <laughs> Maybe I'll do my little pocket there. Right, that fits. Um, and then I have this laptop sleeve here. I have a dress out of this fabric in the red version. Oh no, I have a dress out of this. That's what it is. <laughs> and it's funny because I think people don't realize that it's cats, you know? And then sometimes someone will be like, they don't wanna like, you know, stare at you too quick. Well, that's right. I want to cut out a, um, I just got nervous that the curve was there. I thought that was the front of my bag. So this laptop sleeve was designed so that even though it has this gusset at the bottom, you can tell that the top is narrower than the bottom. And that is so, will this fit my iPad? It will, right? Barely. So um, I was gonna say, like, you can see that it's narrower and that is so that when it's gusseted and if you have the full thing, it would kind of gape and sit like out, like, and flop into your bag, right? Even when it had something in it, it would just kind of flop. And that's why I pivoted out a little bit of that fullness so that even when it's empty, it's gonna stick away from your bag and stay kind of um, in line with it. It does. Oh, I'm using the little front, these little front pockets for my glass pockets, not the gathered ones. I'm using those, making one of those to fit Wow, did you see what I just did? I just thought I was cutting this, oh my gosh. Yeah. 
Well, that's annoying. Uh, I'm using those uh, gathered pockets to hold my wallet. I made one double wide and I'm a um, uh, phone on the end. That's so annoying. Where does that cut? There it is. I'm going to pin this. So that if I ever cut this fabric again, I notice that. Now I have to cut this piece again in wax cotton. That's annoying. So annoyed. And this fabric is, there we go. It's more in line with the grain. Can I get it? Jeez Louise. <laughs> I want it on the grain still. Jeez Louise. <laughs> Thanks, sir. <laughs> well, obviously not very well, Cheryl. This bag has a lot of details. Trying to get it on grain better, too, this time. All right. That. Is on grain, but is it? Okay, good. <laughs> Where's that little cut? Because you know what I'm about to do. I didn't want to like slice through the, the pin with my, uh, my uh, rotary knife. Because that would just add to the whole thing, right? We don't want to do that. Let's cut a straight line. How about that? Look at this little cat right here. He's got a, a leaf blanket. <laughs> They're like holding cherries and flowers and strawberries. I've never noticed that. Do you think I would notice this? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go like this. Just cut into it, there we go. Better safe than sorry. Jerk. <laughs> okay, um, I need to recut this piece here. You're over there in that pile. Okay, we're gonna cut that one. Hmm. Maybe this or this. This is going to sew on top of here. It's going to be like this and this. It's really not going to show much and it's going to have a green pocket. So let's do this one and that one. <laughs> Oh, I am Janice. I mean, I um, probably do a better job than when I'm off camera. I do things like that though. Like I cut off that extra and then I, I fold it up and then I'll just keep, put this with the piece that's left, you know, which actually there isn't much left of this. I think this is about it now. Things like that, you know, like this piece right here, I've cut into this, see? And I just folded it so that it's tame. I'm pretty aware just because I know how much it's bailed me out. But I also know that I don't like my stash being filled with these crazy bits. Uh, then it's not something I want to use. It's a pain in the butt, it's hassly. So I just kind of make it a little bit tidy, you know? All right, so this is the one that's gonna be against 
this fabric here like this. And I think I am going to line this with something because this is my eyeglass pocket, right? Oh, no, this isn't. This is. This one's going to be against that. All right, that one. And then this one's going to sit on top of there. Yeah, we're going to do this one. And I'm going to line this one because it's kind of flimsy. So I'm going to interface. This is D, the straight pocket. left this one so this is this one I need that interfacing and I need um, this angle pocket is this my last piece to cut it is really that's it I got this fabric I think as a oh no I bought this from Duckadilly have any of you ever seen the Duckadilly site? Uh, for Americans, that's a uh, the, like the place that has like all the Liberty fabrics. So expensive, but so nice. Whoops, I just cut that off, didn't I? Um, this is really thin. That wasn't a good use of fabric, that's for sure. So this one also could use some interfacing. It's so thin. Let's interface it. Maybe I'll interline it. Yeah, I think I'll interline it. Let's put a kitty cat, a couple kitty cats there. Finally using that up. This is going to get my magnetic snap. If I can find two, I'll do, maybe I'll do one, the one on the phone pocket. If I find a second one, I'll do it on this wallet pocket. This is on the inside of my bag, so I'm not as worried. Okay, so some fleece. All right, I have a little bin of all my scraps. And I'm thinking that maybe what I'll use is this French terry right here. Because what I was looking for isn't what I was thinking I had. I have this French terry that's cotton and soft. It's not fleece, so French terry is the one that has the loops on the back. So in case you don't know, um, like sweatshirt fleece, that's what it looks like before they brush it and then they brush the back of it and that's how it gets fluffy. So this needs some, I'm gonna use some woven interfacing on this little angle pocket. On my glasses pocket. And I'm gonna line the glasses pocket with this fleece. I just can't seem to use this. I used, I made a uh, linden with this on, as the sleeves and I have a ton left over. And then I still just need one more fabric. Um, maybe I'll use one of these. All right. See you later, Delwyn. Have a good weekend. Yeah, no worries. Oh, you're making the Hudson's nice. I have a, I did those as well.
I made them for hearts. I didn't get to keep those. <laughs> you find yourself being super wasteful of fabric. <laughs> Yeah, I think, um, yeah, that fabric is, yeah, really nice, soft, good apparel fabric, the Tonalon. So this is the way I look at fabric scrap. Uh, you can always do better by cutting out, but this is how I do it. I get what I can the best I can, and I try and leave things in a usable shape and size, and sometimes that kind of comes with experience because what you think is usable, you're like, oh, wait a minute, why did I do it this way? And I think one of my errors I used to always do was if a pattern piece was cut on the fold, I would cut it on the fold and then I'd have this big hole in the middle of my fabric and I didn't need, nothing fit on the sides. And so I learned to start, you know, moving the fold over, you know, like folding it in a different spot and not just going with the fold that it came in from the fabric store. And then the other thing I do is I trim off those extra pieces Sometimes those extra pieces I trim off are actually usable and I just trim it off so that the piece is a little bit normal. And then I put those little pieces in my bin that's gonna go into the mulch mats or whatever. And I think that that helps me not feel bad about some of my scraps because I have a system now and I think that that's what you just gotta do. You just gotta come up with a way that you feel okay with how your fabrics are, you know? Okay, so. This is fun. I'm really glad I got this suggestion to do the um, softer eyeglass. So one side will be the fleece of this pocket and the other side will be my lining fabric. Do you think I need to do both sides? This is also giving it a bit of cushion just using this fleece. All right, so this is this one is complete. I just need to iron it. For this one, I'm gonna iron it, but I, it needs lining. It needs to be stiffer. So I think I'm gonna use this really bright green linen that I have left over from my quilt. Is there a good piece in here? And sometimes I clean it up so good, I'm like, shoot, there's not like a cool little scrap I could use, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I do, Janice. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this summer I designed a pattern where I make these, they're like quilts you can fill up with or like, you know, fill up with fabric scraps. And then I use them in my garden around like trees and bushes. And then what it does is it um, prevents weeds from growing and it holds, retains the water and they work really good. And so this, my ultimate extravagant dream <laughs> is to take a photograph of the ground in my yard and then make some so that they really blend in like camouflage. But the point of it is to divert all those scraps from the landfill. And mostly I use natural fiber. So I figured, oh, I cut this um, wrong side up, shoot. Uh, because I use mostly natural fiber, they theoretically should break down in the environment. But then I was like, I don't want like all these scraps, <laughs> like just, I don't want to just sprinkle the ground with scraps of fabric. They'll blow away. It'll be, it'll look like a hot mess out there. And I had chickens at the time I decided to do this like years ago. All right. So this, if this is face up, you need the, the, uh, dots to face this. So you could even just, you know, line it like that, right? So you need your fusible side up when you cut this out and then it will fuse to this. So I just did this the wrong side. So when I made them, made I tried it out recently and I made one that looks kind of like a Christmas tree skirt. So it goes around, I made two like that and they go, one goes around an orange tree and one goes around a bush and um, they're doing the trick. I mean, my husband was watering every day one of those things and he could water once a week now. We live in the drought, so. They're also not gonna break down very fast, but that's okay. Yep, exactly. 
Yeah, their their fabric is, and you know what, Angela? Another good tip, I think, um, when you're buying from Spoonflower, is don't turn your away from using something like the twill or the linen cotton canvas if you're looking for something heavier duty. You're not looking for something like a poplin or something lightweight. If you're looking for something that's medium weight, don't shy away from those because of the expense. If you look at the price per inch, it's about the same as like the poplin. I really love the print quality on the twill and the linen cotton canvas and the denim. The denim is their heaviest. I use that on the cocoon, it's great, it's stiff. It'd be great for this bag here with no interfacing or, or lining, or not uh, interfacing or stiffener. So yeah, and the other thing to think of, the bad side of Spoonflower is that you do not get the full width of the fabric because they do not print up to the edge of the selvage. Oh, Angela, thank you. You're like giving me good tips and, I'm, and you're giving me money too. <laughs> you don't need to do that, thank you. But yeah, that's another tip from Spoonflower is that you're not getting the full printable width sometimes. You have to be careful about that. You, I think you do get, you might get the full printable width, what they're saying, but the fabric is gonna extend past that a bit sometimes. You like the spandex cotton jersey and the minky. I like their fleece. When I'm getting soft stuff, I really like the fleece. But it's a polyester as well. It's not cotton. Um, I like the um, the I like the modern jersey and the spandex cotton one. You like the stretchy stuff. I like it. I like it. Okay, let's go over everything. We're missing one piece right now because I was a bonehead and cut right into my canvas. Theoretically, this is my iPad pocket, but I'm not gonna not gonna take a chance. Ah, oh, thanks for subscribing, Crockett. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. You make children's garments a bit. Yeah. Do you, what do you think of their gauze? Do you have you ever used that? I've never used it. I'm just gonna cut off a piece just for this bag. <laughs> I have something kind of exciting. For those people who like my knit print fabric, I think I have something very exciting you're gonna like. If, if I, A lot of people are probably really sick of that fabric. But they're also really sick of one key thing on that fabric, just like I've been. And um, I think I fixed it. And so uh, I'm not gonna say anything until I have it to show, but I ordered it yesterday. And I, even if no one ever buys it again, which they still buy it every day, but I will be so happy I finally did this to that fabric. So can't wait to show y'all. And I had, a, I had some samples printed on, I think the poplin, the uh, linen cotton canvas and the fleece. I think I picked the fleece. Uh, yeah, dresses, shirts. I have a couple of Moneta dresses in it. It's great. Oh, that's a great idea, Walter. Yeah. Yeah, some of them print closer to the edges than others. Some you're like, wow, that's four inches on each side that didn't get printed, so. Did you all know that Shutterfly just bought them? I almost went like this and started cutting right there. This piece is doomed. You know what? This is the sewing fairy telling me this isn't gonna fit my iPad, you guys. I did, Barbara. I have a dress. I have a knit print dress and I would wear it to Stitches West. And Kirby made one too. And so sometimes we'd wear them together. It was really funny. It was pretty meta. 
<laughs> now I think it would look a little kooky just because people have seen it still. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna stack all our pieces now. Let's make some room, put all your stuff away. Make some room. I have some weird shaped scraps here. And um, I have a bin for those. We'll do those later. All right. So this is my laptop sleeve. We'll put you here. You are, let me get mine all organized and then I'll tell you how to put yours. Oh, these are scraps too. Okay. This is my favorite part because at this point I'm usually like, oh my gosh, this feels really overwhelming. How am I gonna keep track of everything? And then when I do this, I'm like, okay, I can, I can do this, you know? This is the back pocket, water bottle. This one's kind of on its own. This is the back, goes with you. This is the front, and it fits you guys, you. Uh, where'd your pattern piece go? You were just here. There you go. All right. All right. So if you're constructing your front the way, um, oh, you know what we didn't cut? I didn't cut my uh, flap, my zip facing and my hem facing yet. I knew I was missing something. Because those are measurements. Okay. So I still got to cut those. Right there. All right. So if you're constructing your front with the two gusseted pockets and then the angle pocket and straight pocket, you're going to want <clears throat> your front. And your lining is going to be separate. If you like, you can, uh, you know, label your pieces just to, you know, We'll, we'll do it just so I'm a good example here, right? Front lining. All right. It's very easy to tell if you didn't straighten your edge here and it's a curve, that's how you can tell that that's the front because it has the curve. This is the only other piece with a big curve on it, but it has the cutout of the gusset and this is the laptop sleeve. So you don't have to worry about um, mixing those two up. Okay, so set this lining piece aside and then your front with all of your pocket, your two gusset pockets, mine's big, right? Then your angle pocket and your straight pocket and your flaps, that's one pile, okay? Um, then um, this is the gusset, not the gusset, I'm sorry, the sides of the bag, which is M, right? So you need this. You're gonna take your lining out of here. You're gonna put, I'm gonna put this pocket for my um, phone on this outer gusset. So that's gonna go with mine. And then this lining piece, which you know what that is, right? It's, there's nothing else like it, long and narrow and skinny, right? Uh, I'm gonna put that with my water bottle sleeve here. And then we're gonna put that with our front lining over here as well, okay? So these are our lining, this is our lining stack happening here. All right, the laptop sleeve is kind of on its own. Like this all goes together to itself. And if you're doing the cord pocket and the precious pocket, that goes with this piece here. And I'm gonna put this with the lining because this all gets assembled together. Now let's go to the back here. So the back, also goes in this pile. I'm not going to label it since I already labeled the front. So we know that that's the front. Then this one would be the back. And then we have our back bag and we have this L back pocket that goes with the back right here. So this is one pile. And so this is how we're going to stack them in our bin because this is going to be the order we sew them. We're going to put, let's see, 
the lining and the laptop sleeve and all that. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to do mine a little different. That's right. So I actually have all my pockets are going to my front lining right here. Yours is not, but mine is. Okay. So that's all here. So your lining stack with your laptop sleeve that goes on the bottom. Usually that, yeah, that goes on the bottom. And then, um, my front my front bag is going to go on the bottom of my bin, but don't put yours down there yet. And then you're going to put in your, uh, let's put in your sides next on top of the lining. All right. Then you're going to put in your back and the back pocket. And then you're going to put your front with the, all the pocket pieces on it in there. That's the order I would do it. All right. <laughs> All right, so now I still need, I still need, I can cut that in that. My hem facing, because I'm gonna have a zippered top. Hi April, how's it going? Oh, do they not come with like a, um, like if you, like, have you ever made a noodle head pattern and she has that one page of all the names of all the pieces and you just cut them apart and then you can just stick them. You could print it on, um, printable labels, <laughs> the straps. Um, I'm, you know what, Sarah, I haven't decided, am I going to use the wax cotton or webbing? I might use webbing. But that's a good, a good, um, oh yeah. So if you make your strap for the bag, that is one other part of the assembly. You're right, Sarah. And then put it with the hardware. I still need to pull in my, pull out all my hardware too. Oof, this bag. Yeah, I don't know if they, they don't have a projector file though. I could almost guarantee that because you actually have to draft your own pieces with her patterns. <laughs> well, I mean, Janice, if I were just making as prescribed, we'd be done by now, right? Good night, Malin. Have a good weekend. Sleep well. Yeah, it is a, it is a, it is a project, Janice. <laughs> okay. I need two that are 18 and 13, 18 and three eighths and one by one and a half. Okay. I'm doing a lot of this on the fly too, so I'm probably making it look a little more complicated. Yeah, I got one yard. It's, you're about to see the end of it. How many layers? I just got one yard. I kind of wish it wasn't curling though. So let's see, 18 and 3 eighths is about the width of my ruler. All right, I'm going to do that and that. I think I can get all of them in this piece here. I'm not going to be too worried about that showing that little crease here. Not on these zip facings and stuff. Yeah, so... Uh, do I have a, what do I say for the strap? Yeah, so I make the strap or you can um, use webbing. Yeah, so if you have a one and a half inch wide, if you're using like the shoulder strap, that's like for the messenger bag, you're gonna need like one and a half inch wide webbing. And that's right here in the notions. I think for the, um, that dark purple bag in the photo, I made that in the canvas and I make it the way I always do. So if you want a strap that's one and a half inches wide finish, you need to cut a piece that's six inches wide by the same length. And then you, you know, fold it in half 
and then um, open it and then fold those folds towards each other then fold it in half again and sew it. I Some do, April. I've seen people saying that, so I'm a little nervous. This one doesn't seem to. I haven't sewn with it a whole lot, but. Yeah, so you can make your strap piece if you want, but um, I, I gave it to you as webbing measurements instead in the pattern. Okay, I need one straight edge. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I've gotten a lot out of this one yard. It doesn't take that much fabric. I think that this pattern takes one and a half yards and I'm not using everything. Maybe I did get more than one. I've d I definitely don't think this took a yard. That's in 44 inch. So 1.3 in outer and this is 85%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so one and a half inches. Let's get our long narrow. This is the hem facing. And two that are 18 and three eighths. This is gonna be stiff. Ooh, 18. I'm just use my fingernail to draw on the wax. There's my facing. And then now I need two that are two and three eighths for the zip facing. This is what's great about wax cotton too, is you can just do a little mark with your nail. So it needs to be two and three eighths. There we go. It also, oh, see, there's a little nick in my, this is why I get rid of my rulers. There's a nick in my ruler. Um, it makes doing all your markings like your your uh, buttons and drill holes. You can just use a little pin and go like this, you know, and then it's marked on your <laughs> wax cotton. It's kind of nice. Alright, so... It's gonna cut off a, this is a fold right here, so I'm just using it as a straight edge to cut. And now I have a straight edge to cut to make my 18 and 3 eighths. And I need two of these in lining He's like, you could use this wax cotton. I don't know, does anyone know of any drawbacks for using the wax cotton as a strap? I have some like sewn like that, that I did as a trial. Let's check it out. Where is it? I know it's blue. Did I use it already? Shoot, maybe I did. I have so much webbing, you guys. Is it in one of these? I don't think so. These are the bins I hate the most. So I just don't monkey around with them too much. I don't think I use that stuff. Hmm. I don't see. Can I use wax cotton as a webbing strap? Is there problems with that? I actually don't know. I have some sewn in this blue. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Barbara. Yeah, that's a bit involved with for me too, April. These folks do it themselves. Yeah, you can use vinyl on the under aisle or just like webbing or 
fabric or lining. What if I used lining? I wonder if I have enough. Huh. I have to think about that. Do I have enough of any of these? <laughs> Let's line up these birds. This is the zip facing. It really does not deserve Liberty of London fabric, but is that really what I'm about to use? Maybe I use this. It's a little sturdier. <laughs> Yeah, she sews webbing into fabric for straps. Yeah, if you look at that, uh, the white one I sewed of this, I used a ribbon on the back of webbing because the webbing was lightweight and the ribbon was lightweight and it actually came out really nice. <laughs> I'm pretty good about managing my uh, sewing room, but yeah, you're right, there's a lot of stuff. There's just like, there's still so much um, stuff like, you know, webbing and zipper from the factory. Someday I hope someone will buy the two zipper bundles I still have for sale. It's such a good deal. I tried, I've been trying to tell my friend, I'm like, you really should get that. Like if you want to cut your cost, you should just get this zipper. But she likes buying zippers in colors to match and, and that's what her customers expect now. So she really can't go back, you know, I, I get it. All right, so that's my zip facing. So I need to decide on the straps. Look at this long piece. It could totally be my strap. I mean, do we think that that would? What do you guys think? Yeah, what if I lined it with ribbon? Let's see here. I want to use one inch uh, as well because I don't need it to be that wide. Do I have something I like? <laughs> I have all these samples too from, like look at this. This is one of my little drawers. So this is what I'm up against. I don't wanna throw away all these little samples that I got. They're usable someday. So I saved these two. I don't want to just throw that stuff away. And they, they don't want that back. You know, what's the pound for? So that is actually really, really, really helpful. Let me explain it to you. That's what I got, guys. These are all webbings. So I get all these weird cut pieces because things get like, oh, here's the stove strap. So see, I made this wax cotton strap. It wasn't easy to sew, I will be honest. This, wax, this isn't the same waxed cotton that I'm using today. It's thinner and it wasn't, I didn't like it. Let's just put it that way. I didn't like it. And so I never bought from them again. And I never talked about it <laughs> except to say I'm not buying from them again. I have this like ugly off white stuff, ugly cause I want my bag to be cute. Maybe this is what I use the Liberty for. That would be worthy. Okay. Oh, what's this hashtag line to be? Um, it's SS ideal bag. All right, so if you want shoulder straps on a bag like this right here. Oh, and see here, this is, I made those straps for this bag right here. 
It's one of my project bags. This wax cotton was so weird. Lined in Liberty. Look at how beautiful this is. I bought a, a handle kit from Noodle Head. Just been sitting there for too long. I really need to use this bag. It's so cute in the Liberty. I love it. Doesn't really look great on camera, does it? <laughs> but the Liberty is so pretty in there. And then there's no vinyl. Spider webs are free. Look at there's dust on the bottom. So if you want a shoulder strap like long enough to go over your shoulder like this, you want something like, uh, and, and I sew all the way down the bag to make it really secure. So look at how far down this goes. See that? This is a sample of everything we made in a nondescript fabric. So people would just look at the design. This right here, these are cut 44 inches long, two of them. What else is back there? Well, this is where all my fabric is. Patterns, fabric, and then I have a couple of prototypes above me, just from patterns I've designed. <laughs> so if I want to line these, that's going to be a pain in the butt to sew, you guys. All right, I think that this is 44 inches, though. It is 43. That will work. I can use this piece, which is really nice, right? Um, and I don't need to make this four inches wide because I can't sew these the same way if I'm going to line it. So we'll put fabric against my body, and I'll, I'll use this as the lining. Fine. I've sold all the samples I want to sell. I keep that just because it's such a nice example. I know I don't, I've never used it. <laughs> I only have that. I have a knit print project bag because it's kind of like, I would think that would be the thing people would know chicken boots for. And I have two pocket buckets and a bin bin with a lid. That's all I have in here. Just four. It's not that bad, I promise. I'm going to make this. Can I make two of these one and a half inch? Why can't I get two? Ooh, barely. Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to make this one and a half inches wide. That's going to make it one inch finished with a quarter inch seam allowance on either side. An experiment. We love those, don't we? I still have two cocoons for sale. No, 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 don't cut into the strap. Why'd you get one? Why'd you get in front of the knife? Jeez Louise, cooperate. So I think how I'm going to have to do this is edge stitch it. This is the other thing about wax cotton. Look at that. You can just, who needs pins when you can just position it the way you want and it stays. Are you guys seeing the problem with this? All right, so. This is so lightweight. I'm gonna have to interface this. And there's gonna be like a ridge in between because of the thickness. Do I have half inch webbing? I could put some half inch webbing in between. And then that would make up the thickness difference. Why not use something like batting or deco in light as an interfacing for just Liberty? Hmm. I don't, you know what it is? I'm not sure I want this to be the fabric you see. I don't want straps like this. <laughs> I 
Yep, there's the strap. Decoville, I don't know what that is. Is that like a interfacing type of thing? I must have something that can go in there, but I need at least three yards of it. So I'm not sure about that part. I might have elastic I could put in there. That wouldn't matter either. I probably do actually. I have so much of this 3 8 inch elastic. And then that, if I put this in here in the middle like this, that makes it smooth across. And then if I interface this, you wouldn't see as much of the bumps. What do you think of that? <laughs> the basket goodie that you had already start closing. <laughs> I, I like kind of like the idea of that. See, then it makes this thickness, you know. Hmm, I don't have any of that, Barbara. I mean, I have stiffener. That's not a problem. Like, I have, like, a whole roll of stiffener over there, which is, like, uh, this stuff. I have this stuff. And this is, like, Pelon 70, right? I can even do that. You know, I can um, cut a little narrow strip. I have so much of this stuff. Uh, that can go in here, too. You know, I'm thinking about this right now. I may sort this out off camera. Maybe try a few. I want this not to be too hard to sew. But look, this is nice and smooth on this side too. There's no ridges being formed by any of that. Softer than stiffener. Okay. It's pretty stiff, you know. I'm just trying to make up this thickness where this folds back. So that when this is sitting on it, this layer of fabric is sitting on it, it's not gonna, you know, dip down into where this white stuff is, right? Cause this is so thin. I am gonna interface this, but still. It would also give me something, you know, like when I, ed when I turn this back and edge stitch it. Yeah, keep it out of the seam loss, exactly. Um, I really want to preserve this stuff now, but yeah, let's just look at a little piece of it, right? So, if that was in there, and I actually, you know, measured that right there, And I probably could, I could sew at least one side along long edge, right? And then all I have to do is turn it under and edge stitch it. I think that'll work. I think that'll work and I think that'll look good. Look at those little birds. All right, all right, I think that's what I'll do. Um, and it's probably, the stiffener might be less fiddly than the inner, the elastic, but the elastic is, it's pretty stable since it's braided and I have so much of it. It's only three eighths though. It's my only thing I'm worried about, but it's the same. It's a little, it's not as thick as the stiffener either. It is more on par with the thickness of these two things here. So maybe I would want the stiffener because once I add the seams of this fabric on here, that's going to make the edges thicker. 
So I may want this middle part to be thicker than what the width, the thickness of these turn back. You guys following me? <laughs> Am I deep in my own little hole here? I will spare you guys and deal with that off camera, but at least I have my straps cut, All right? Um, we just need findings now. Yeah, I have two pocket buckets here, mainly because I thought Cricut might want one. Here's one. They're pretty cute too. Oh yeah, and then like here's the, this fabric. This is the one of the original Notions cases and it has the little inside pocket. <laughs> but yeah, here's one of the pocket buckets. Perfect clean prop pocket bucket. And this craft print, see the scissors? <laughs> with eyeballs. <laughs> Can you see it? It's kind of goofy. And then all the hands that are making stuff. <laughs> oh, whoops. I'm making a mess in here. Sheesh. All right, set that aside. <laughs> I feel like that stuff's so boring. Um, I do have Microtex needles, but not for my industrial. Good point though. That is a good point. All right, what do we need for findings or notions? All right. I'm gonna need a three bar and loops. I'm not going to need a three bar and loops. And so let me show you what those are in case you need to know. Uh, I don't want that. Ooh, I just thought of something. Okay, buckle, swivel hooks, no, cord, no, no, no. Weird stuff, yeah. And whoops, D-rings. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about, so you need for a strap to be adjustable, you need a three bar slider. That's what this is right here. And then you need a loop lock, which is basically a loop like this, and it can be plastic like this as well. Um, I never have metal matching metal in this, and it drives me crazy. Um, if you don't have these, you can use, these instead. And so when you attach your strap to your bag, you attach it so that the strap goes through and then your adjustable strap goes through the top part. Whereas, you know, if you didn't have the three bar, it, they would just both go through this like that. You know, they would share the hole basically, right? Um, and then you need it for the adjustable and then you need one for the other end. You have to have all three for the strap to slide back and forth. Sometimes you can uh, tether the, the strap to the bag at one end and, and, then it's, and then it only needs to slide on the other end, right? And it works. Yeah, but it does, it's asymmetrical then. My industrial can't use regular needles. What do you mean? Like the gold color with the green. Yeah, these are leftover from projects. And then um, I steal them off things I donate. Always take the hardware off stuff that isn't donatable. I have all kinds of crazy things in here. And I just use a um, hardware organizer. These are just leftover. Like, look at this ancient thing. Some clip on a bag. Look at that little tiny little three bar slider. Let's pull this out and look at it. What do you mean by regular needles? Of course I use regular needles. You're, oh no, it's just cause it's not zoomed in. <laughs> look at this tiny little three bar slider. It's so cute. Uh, D rings and triangle rings. And you know what I'm thinking? This I could use to hold my keys. These are all samples at a show. Not all these, some of these things. Here's a one inch three bar slider. That doesn't go in there. Or something like this, you know, so I can attach it to the bag with a webbing loop. 
And then I have a something to clip my keys to. This would honestly be a lot easier to clip my keys than this because this, this even though it's the same thickness, it has a ridge and it's more squared off and it's a pain in the butt. Oh, Nancy, you are being needle, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You are assuming that all home machines are regular needles. <laughs> You're being discriminating against the needles I use on my machine. I use a size 14, 18, 16 on my industrial, but the shank is round, not flat. And on a home machine, most home machines, the shank is flat. Uh, the other thing that makes a big difference is the length of the needle is extremely important in a machine. So, <laughs> okay, um, these, uh, I think having the um, point is helpful. Using D-rings to adjust something, we all know how crappy that is. Yeah, I don't have a Microtex for my industrial, only for my home machine. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I have them, but I, they aren't compatible with my industrial. That's sorry, I should have said it that way. What do we think? I'm thinking I will use a triangle and then just attach it with a webbing loop to the top of my bag. Chunk, okay, we got that. All right, but I was gonna look in my weird stuff thing to see if I maybe had something Look at these tiny little three bar. Oh, these were something I couldn't figure it out. They sent me this as a sample and I couldn't figure out how it worked. I won't go into it right now. I will ask for samples from these folks and then they send me 10, and it, which is really nice because you get to try it out and see is this really gonna work in my, my project or not. These are all bag making things. I guess I could do something like that, right? I've never used these. This was when I was first getting into bag making. I bought these to try them out. These were samples for this other thing I did with Maria. It holds pins. These I stole off a package because I thought they were kind of cool. Look, it's a screw, plastic screw. I just steal things off of things you're gonna throw away or donate. All right, what else do we need? Bias binding. Okay, bias binding. Okay, I got my bias binding. I'm gonna use one of the ones that I just am selling right now. Um, elastic. Okay, I need 3 8 inch elastic. All right. Zippers. Black or cream? Black or cream? I think cream. You need one inch wide webbing if you want the handle. I don't need that because I'm gonna have a shoulder strap. And then all these, oh, those are, yeah, and the, those are those three bar slider loop lock is down there. So I just need zippers now. Okay. Yeah, so I definitely, I use zipper by the yard. <laughs> oh no, April. Sorry for needling me. <laughs> no, no, I should have understood what you were saying. But yeah, you know, you don't have to discriminate against the needles. No. <laughs> yeah, if you if there's some bag make professional bag maker out there that wants really affordable zipper by the yard, check my website. I think I have two bundles left. It works out so cheap. So and then you get uh, sliders. You can do this. Me and Rayanne always wanted to have like a ball pit, you know, that we got to swim in like Sheldon in Big Bang Theory, but of zipper sliders. All right, I need nine inch for the straight pocket. Now I changed some of my measurements for some of these things, so I'm thinking about that right now. I'm gonna use my scissors. I need a nine inch. See, this is why you want, you have zippers, 
always the right size. I'm not doing the precious pocket or the pocket flap. Okay, so I do need one for the zipper opening. It's my last thing and that needs to be about 18 and 3 8 so we'll just cut a piece like that. And then I'm gonna put on my sliders right now. That's everything, right? Oh, this end is the crooked end, isn't it? Okay. It took me years to be able to get a wholesale account with YKK. It was like a unicorn. It was like trying to find a unicorn. It was my last, uh, you know, people really want the vinyl, my vinyl source. Has anyone ever asked to pay me for my vinyl source? No. <laughs> and then, um, oh, can you see how I guess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me shut this side and then I'll show you again. Um, but I was always like, vinyl, that's easy to find. Or stiffener, that was the other one. It's the uh, getting, getting in with YKK and letting them, getting them to let you buy from them. All right, so I open it a tiny bit. So one thing that you need is you need the zipper to be straight across. I saw someone else do a tutorial on this and it wasn't very good. I'm just gonna be straight up with you. It was, wasn't very good. They wanted to use a fork to do it. So there is this uh, tool that um, I never got from YKK, by the way, and it mounts to the table and it's like two tines of a fork sitting up on the table. And so you can kind of approach it with your, um, you put your slider on the um, tines like this, it holds it like this. And then you put your zipper like this. We never got that tool, so we just figured it out on our own. Um, and it's just as fast. So you want a little bit of it open. So now the thing to remember, this is coil chain slider, okay? It doesn't matter each way, you can put your zippers both ways. In fact, watch, you can even do this is why you can have sometimes, you can have four zippers on one long piece of zipper. You can have them, these are both going toward each other right now. See that? So once I have pulled it down, then it's gonna open and close. But see, I haven't pulled this one down yet, so that's why the zip, the slider can just be in the center. It looks kind of magical. <laughs> but once, you pull it, go down, you know, pull the zipper down, then you'd have your opening and you'd have to, you know, if I pull it down, I can go to that part. I can go this way, but just so you know. All right, so like this, if I pull this off right now, I'd have to zip it back up. It's very logical when you have it. I, I wanna show you on the other one. <laughs> awesome, I'm, well, I'm glad it feels that way. <laughs> I can tell like people are just like, this is so boring, but maybe not, I don't know. All right, so like I said, you want it straight across and you want it a little bit open, see that? And now what I was about to say about the coil chain. So remember coil chain, just like any zipper teeth, the teeth when they go together are offset, right? Cause they're interlocking. So in other words, don't ever expect your zipper to be lining up like this. It doesn't, it's always interlocking, right? So even if you cut straight across, one coil is lower than the other side. That's what you want. So what I always do is I'm um, right-handed. I hold it in my left hand. I put the slider on the left side there. And then I kind of just hold it there. It's very fiddly until you get the hang of it. So then I pull this apart and it unzips it a little bit and I put it in here. And now I'm gonna pull this away and I'm just gonna straighten it. All I did was I let that relax. So this is barely on there right now because you want your zipper to be, you really wanna try and line it up so that you're not putting the one coil on this side four up on this side and then you get a bubble on this side of your zipper, right? That's what takes practice. But just try and make it sure that, okay, I'm looking at my slider. It looks you know straight across to me and then I push it with my thumb until it clicks and maybe it doesn't, it's not gonna click for me. Let's get it a little bit better. There we go, it kind of clicks and now it's on. That's it. It's actually pretty easy. You get really good at it. 
me and Rayanne were not very good at it at first. And you just kind of um, get your own little knack. All the fork tines do is hold the zipper. That's all they do. They do not put the slider on. It just holds it. You still have to fiddle it. It doesn't hold it in some special magical way that always makes it line up perfectly. Just so you know that. Don't think you're missing out on it. That's what I've learned from that thing. We had one of those at uh, Kokotat. So I knew it existed, but yeah, you just. So if I get this off really, really off, right? So say I put a little bit, cause look, your, your um, slider can go on without the other side, right? So now if I put this way up here, see, can I get it on that, that high? I'm not sure. Pretty sure I can. Can I? Can I do it badly? I'm gonna try and do it badly now. There, there, I got it. See how I got a bump in there? And it's got cockeyed. It's bending to the left. That's because the, see how much they're off right there? That's all it is. And then you, it's okay, you haven't hurt anything. Um, you can even pull these all the way apart and put them back together. It's just so super forgiving. You can't use this on dresses. You can't use it as a zipper fly. It's not, there's not a lot of applications in clothing that you can do it. Thanks for the donation, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, that's it. I think there's a, I think there's a tutorial linked in buying the zipper. I feel like there is. It used to be. So there we go. There's my zippers. I only have cream for sale still. I still have black, but I just don't have a full bundle anymore. It comes um, like 212 meters per bundle. It's a lot. Or 213 yards. That's what it is. 213 yards. 200 meters. <laughs> You'll have it for a while. <laughs> and um, if you get one, uh, if you ever buy this stuff from anywhere, like if you're just not there yet and someday you do, I just want to tell you it's a beast to deal with. And so when you're seeing it here in my bin, um, this one got away from me and it's on a bolt right now and I have to respect it right now. So my tip is it comes on this cardboard thing. It's very, very carefully um, unpack it a little bit, get a hose mount, a garden hose mount and put it on the garden hose. Just leave the cardboard in there in the middle and put it on there. Um, it's too heavy for like, this is 4.5 coil chain. A fly zipper is 5.0 to give you an idea of how big this is. So a dress is 2.5. It's much smaller. Uh, you can't use it for a dress or a zipper of a fly because like the fly on my jeans that I accidentally used, it doesn't have a stop. Uh, that's not the word I want. So you see how this zipper right here, this is a zipper fly. You see how if I pull down, like look, see how hard that is to lift up? You have to like click it up. Now, if your zipper fly, you didn't do it all the way and you put this, the, the um, pole down, it's the zipper's not gonna go any further, right? But if that happens on this, right? Can I put this on? Oh, I'll just do it on one of these because I have to have the, so say, uh, say the zipper is in your jeans. Look, it doesn't have a stop. If he pulls, it'll just keep going. So it doesn't have a lock. That's the word I'm looking for. Because this is your stop. This is the lock. Now, just because this zipper doesn't have a, a stop here, that's okay. You just sew across it or put binding or... No one sees this part. That doesn't matter. Just think of it looking like that. Does that make sense? So that, that's why. It doesn't have a lock on it. Uh, you, can, you can buy it that way, but I didn't. I didn't need it that way.
Uh, where did this go? This goes here. These go here. <laughs> I made a mess today. That was always my favorite way. And, and in fact, you'll notice um, that when people are selling zipper by the yard, it's harder to find 4.5, but you can find four and five. And I think partly it's because YKK knows that's a really popular width and there is kind of a big jump between the four and the four five. Whereas like the two five to the two to two, five, two and a half to three, three and a half to four, those all seem kind of incremental. And then it kind of jumps a little bit, it seems like to me. I think I have a sample card here somewhere, but, um, or I may have gotten rid of it. I've really pared down, like I just got rid of everything, so. That side of my room just has binding and thread and a few books. This side has all the supplies. So um, I think they hold back that size because they sell so well on it or it's, a, it's just a supply and demand issue. I've said often one of our biggest struggles when we were early on is I was buying that from the factory I used to work at. They were nice to pass it along to me and they would just charge me a little bit more than they paid, which was really generous. But um, when there was at one point a problem and none of us could get the sliders and they were stuck in, oh, I remember there was a strike. No, there wasn't a strike. There was something going on in the ports. So I got my, I had all this coil chain, but I couldn't get any sliders. So I would beg them for like a hundred at a time and we'd go through them right away, like in two weeks. I'm like, can I have a hundred more? And they're like, we were really low too. Now with the panini, it's really bad. So uh, I don't know, Walter. I, I imagine so. Uh, I there's nothing in this world that would allow me to describe to you the number of options with zippers. <laughs> that probably says it all. There is anything you can imagine. The site is. You just stick to your lane. Like I photocopied and screenshotted what I did, what I wanted, and I got it every time perfectly. And it was a miracle because I just stuck to that. But there is, it's, yeah. I have some really cool zipper here too. I should show you some of these things. Um, because uh, some of you bag makers out there may be really interested to know. So look at this one. This one's really chunky. <laughs> it's huge. Look at that in comparison to my little, these are all little, I should have checked my bin here. But look at how bit different that is. It's black though, you can't see. <laughs> it's huge. That was a sample. Um, what I want to show you is this waterproof stuff. These are all my apparel zippers. They're basically invisible zippers and jean zippers. I do have this, you, you know, um, is this Patterns by Annie? Patterns by Annie, I think, sells zipper by the yard in all kinds of really great colors. It the, Her sliders are kind of big and chunky is my only beef with these. And they're metal. See, look at the slider's really tiny, but the pole's really big. I used this on my Blanca flight suit. So I did use this as my opening zipper on that. And um, it doesn't come unzipped very easily. So I did use it on apparel. All right, I wanna show you the waterproof zippers cause they're very interesting. This is not it. This was all organized till very recently. Well, maybe that is in there somewhere. Hmm. Where are those? They've got to be here somewhere. So, when I first started working in the garment industry, or the outerwear, outerwear industry, when I switched over, we started hearing about this, is this one upside down? 
Yeah, this one's really cool. Yes, this is what I was about to tell you about. Isn't it? No, it's not, shoot. So this right here is a number three and it's so tiny. It probably doesn't look like it to you guys, but it really is. Like, where was that slider at in here? Look at the difference. I mean, <laughs> it, there's so many options. Cause you gotta think about like marine app applications, water, uh, you know, like boats and stuff like that. But I wanna show you the waterproof one cause it's really cool, especially if there's a bag maker out there that just doesn't know this exists and you're doing like waterproof stuff because it's got a coating on one side. Did I use it? Maybe I used it. Oh, and then there's these kinds of zippers too. These are, these are not my favorites. Big chunky teeth. I must have used it. All right, but I wanted to tell you my story. So, but you can get it where it's a coating on one side and then it can be seam sealed into a project. So just so you know that that's possible. Um, but when I first started working at Kokatat, that wasn't when I first started working there, it was actually probably a couple of years into it. Um, I heard, I've never put a slider on this. Let's see how this goes. We started hearing about this company called Arcteryx. Have you guys heard of Arcteryx? They make really good outdoor gear based in Canada. A little cockeyed, but I got it on there. Um, and when I would go to shows, I would always look at their booth. They were kind enough that they would let people into their booth, even if I was a designer. So I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't walk into booths as a designer, just so you know, you can't do that. Uh, you need to probably be really polite and um, forthcoming. You can try and be kind of sneaky and kind of walk through someone's booth as a designer, but it's really in poor taste sometimes to do that. You, you really kind of want to be unobtrusive and not look like you're spying. Okay. But they were, they had their booth open. They were very welcoming. We were too. We were always welcoming of that. Um, and they would let me look their stuff over because it was, it was so amazing. So these guys were really turning manufacturing on its head in the outerwear industry. They were like, we don't want these big bulky zipper poles on these sleeve pockets. How can we make the zipper pole smaller? What if we um, shaved it off? What if we put the pole on the reverse side? What if we, and I have some of the zipper here somewhere. What if the pole was on the, the back side? You know, here's the coiled chain, right? What if the, you, you could put it in your jacket upside down and then the pole stuck out so then you didn't have all this ugly stuff, which to me now looks like the wrong side after these guys developed this. And so that really turned it on its, on its head. They started re-engineering sewing machines and the hardware they used. And now you can buy that from YKK. So it's pretty neat. There not, there's no rules, you guys. You can... Um, do whatever you want, you know? <laughs> Niches are great. Um, I didn't Blythe and Bonnie um, mainly because I really like the freedom and the, the cost savings of having it by the yard so that I could cut it however length I want. And with metal, you can't do that. You have to, have, you have to buy them pre-made so it's more expensive that way. Um, I also find that it's really nice, the freedom to be able to sew through the zipper is really nice and you can't do that on metal as well. But I will say like towards the end, like the last couple of years of chicken boots, the aesthetic people were craving and wanting was really different than chicken boots. Um, and I loved that aesthetic too. So it was all the like undyed canvas, leather, uh, uh, and metal hardware and stuff like that. Um, and that kind of look started dominating. So it would have been hard to keep competing if I didn't consider using some of that, if I wanted to do that. But then again, it wasn't the aesthetic people wanted from me. It may have been my aesthetic personally after a while, like I, my, you know, my desires change, but I wasn't making things that look like that. So you can do whatever you want. You know, 
Yeah, exactly, Janice. Also, Nancy, there's more knitters than golfers in the world. Consider that. It's not that small of a niche. <laughs> yeah, Libby, that's called a serger. <laughs> You've got one. <laughs> That's why, uh, that's another reason why sergers were invented is so that there was no bobbin because it's a chain stitch. <laughs> but there's problems with that too. <laughs> Just don't ever buy those disposable bobbins because they're kind of problematic and wasteful and you'll always have to use cream or black. <laughs> that's the other thing, Blythe and Bonnie, I used cream like for the longest time, I used black zipper, black webbing, and that was it, right? But we had really high quality um, findings and they were all American made, by the way, except for our zippers. Everything was American made. The sliders were made in Japan. The coil chain might've been made here in the States, but I can't verify that. So um, when I added cream, like I added the cream, people were like, oh my gosh, a new zipper color. <laughs> they were all so excited. So was a Rayanne. She was like, oh, this is so great. <laughs> now to have black. And it really changed the look. But it was kind of my techie background kind of seeping into that. And I could find webbing that wasn't the shiny poly, poly pro stuff, you know, I could get the nicer stuff, you know, so. <laughs> um, but you know, like my friend Maria, she has a source of zippers um, in uh, South America where she can get um, any color she wants and really cute zipper sliders and all her zippers really affordably. And she just has them made to the link she uses. So bye Walter. Happy Halloween to you too. Oh, I was wearing my Halloween shirt today. I can't find it though, so. I'm starving, you guys. I just realized that. All right, uh, so that was my ideal bag. If you want to follow the directions, there's a video for this, so you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it, so. <laughs> and all the thread was medium gray. It was just all shades of gray, Libby. <laughs> I would love that, too. I, it was so fun to put my binding on my rack and fill because my binding rack was getting so empty and now it's getting a little full. So, um, what else do I, I don't think I have anything else to tell you guys. Probably, but I can't think of it. Now I have a big old mess and I really wanted to sew the buttons and buttonholes on the Fairfield. Oh, I did want to say my husband saw yesterday the picture on Instagram of his Fairfield and he's like, who's that shirt for? Is that my shirt? And I said, yeah. He's like, wow, that looks great. <laughs> that made me so happy. Who bought all those binding sets? They, they're, they're not all, oh, the dozens. There were only um, four of them, Janice. I really didn't think anybody, the Patreon patrons. So I told Patreon patrons first, and then the next morning, I told them like late afternoon, and then the next morning the newsletter went out. I really didn't think those whole sets would go. Yeah, of course, Sand Dollar. Nice, Sarah. Yeah, Nancy got four rolls of one color. <laughs> no, Janice, she just bought it yesterday or something. She bought way after you. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so here's the deal. I got the, I ordered the same, I ordered one bolt of every fabric. So here's the mind bending thing. I asked him, I said, hey, if you can cut these into two cuts so that I get rolls that are half the size as usual so that they're not so big, right? So that way um, I don't, you don't have to buy, you know, 20 yards of binding on one roll. And he was like, okay, yeah, we can do that. Here's the problem. He only did that on all but I think four, right? All but four. I think four of them, there were two, two little yards because there was like 10, you know, he said if there were less than 10 yards on the bolt, I couldn't do that. So not all bolts had as many yards. So some had nine and a half or 10 yards and some of them had 15 yards. That five yard difference makes up a lot more rolls. So that number one was one of those that didn't have enough to do two cuts. 
So there was only 18 rolls to begin with, whereas you know eight of the other prints had 36 rolls. Big difference. And it's funny because when you look at the number of yards per roll, that number one had, what, 13 yards per roll? But one of the others that had two cuts, so 36 rolls, there are 11. Only two yards different. It's crazy. I think that's a good one, Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, there's still quite a bit, though. I sold out of two of them now. Number one and number five. Oh, uh, I thought I sold out of number 10 or 11. I guess not. I'm low on number 11, the stripe. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna get going. Thanks for coming. The sewing will be so much more fun. Yeah, the neutral is nice. There's the warm white and the cool white. Nancy got the cool white, but there's a warm white as well, like tone on tone, like a print. All right, so I'll see you guys Wednesday and Thursday to sew this. I won't be streaming next Saturday. Uh, I'll be out of town, but I'll be here Wednesday, Thursday, and I'll have a new bag. So thanks for coming. Good luck cutting yours out. I hope my all my crazy changes doesn't dissuade you. Just stick to the plan. You'll have a nice ideal bag leave the flap off or don't, you know, maybe make do that. <laughs> it's a little easier. Um, I'll see you guys on, um, Wednesday. So <laughs> yeah, Nancy, you did. <laughs> I just packed it right before the stream. That's how I knew that. <laughs> bye Elizabeth. Thanks. Bye. Bye Terry. Nice seeing you too. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good weekend. Bye.